Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Being a sergeant, ain't it, sergeant? Yeah. Two down, three up. How long did it take you to get them? Fourteen years. About as long as it's taking you to clean this room. Is that what you wanted to be ever since you was a little boy, sergeant? A sergeant? No. I wanted to be president, but they don't get to wear a uniform, so I settled for sergeant. <laughs> it's kind of a shame you didn't go into politics at that. You're friendly, you're honest, you're clever. Knock it off! Got a good speaking voice. Do your work. I'll be right back. Duty Hut, second platoon, Private Pie speaking. No, sir, I'm just as sorry as I can be, but he just stepped out. Could I tell him who's calling? Lieutenant Peterson? Uh, yes, sir. He just stepped out just for a minute. Be glad to, sir. Uh, none of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment. Hey, could you hold on just a tiny bit, sir, uh, while I find a pencil to write this down with? Sir? Sergeant Carter's report to the colonel's office on the double. Well, if you can wait just a half a second while I write this. Hello? Hello? Uh, none of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment. Colonel's office on double. None of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment. Colonel's office on double. None of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment. Colonel's office on double. None of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment. It's the pile. Special. <laughs> We're out of here. I want to catch the first Liberty bus into town. On the devil. There. I just had to write things down. It's easy to forget. Your mind can play tricks on you. Of course, with you, it's probably different. With your training, 14 years and all, you can remember real good. But I still have to write things down. Otherwise, I forget it right the next minute. Pile. Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Will you get out of here? I'm on my way now, Sergeant. I done what you told me to. I minded the phones. Of course, she was gone such a short time, and there was only the one call. Yeah, what was it? Oh, I got it all wrote down here for you. Only thing was, I couldn't remember where to spell Lieutenant Peterson's name with an S-E-N or an S-O-N. Whoa, 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 Peterson, Lieutenant Peterson, what was that about Lieutenant Peterson? Oh, well, it was just that I didn't know how to spell his name, S-E-N or S-O-N. I put down S-E-N. What's the matter, Sergeant? Was it supposed to be S-O-N? Did he call here, Lieutenant Peterson? What did he want? What was the message? Well, it's all wrote down over here. Huh? You give me that. Who can read this? Let me see. Some of the platoon... No, that's... None of the platoon is Taga. Taga? What's a Taga? Oh, that's to go. That's funny. I thought that said... What else? What else? None of the platoon is to go on... What's that word right there? How do I know? You wrote it. Oh, I got it. None of the platoon is to go on liberty. Special assignment, and you're to report to the colonel's office on the bubble. Double. Double. That's it. That's the message. You never did tell me, Sergeant. Was it S-E-N or S-O-N? Will you get out of here? That's the situation, Sergeant. There are a lot of men ashore from the Fleet Marines, so we're assigning your platoon as extra military police. Yes, sir. You'll do street duty in town this morning and relieve the gate and security details on the base this afternoon. We want the town and entire military installation shaped up. Foro in appearance of military courtesy. I'm sure my visit will tell me a lot. At ease. I hope so, sir. Oh, Mr. Horton, this is Lieutenant Peterson. Mr. Horton is special counsel here from Washington for a little look-see. How are you, Peterson? Nice to meet you, sir. Could we provide an escort for you, sir? Some transportation? No, I'd like to prowl around alone, find out what's really going on around here. <laughs> well, I won't be able to join you for lunch today, Colonel. I have an invitation from the Army Club. Great bunch. 
I served in the Army myself, 124th. Great outfit. Oh, good background for my work with the Military Appropriations Committee. Yes, sir. Great outfit. Yes, sir. I, uh, see you later, Colonel. <laughs> That'll be all, Sergeant. But remember, I want this town and this base police like it's never been. I understand, sir. Everything will be 4 0 right down the line, sir. Ain't it lovely? Here we are, girls. Secret agents 00. <laughs> How do we rate all these choice assignments? Well, it's just for one day. Yeah, someday they picked. Streets full of them guys from the fleet. And after eight months at sea, they just love to have some MP remind them to keep their shirts buttoned and their tie clips straight. They're real sweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you people, listen up. Now, I told you how I wanted things shaped up, so hop to it. I don't want to see one Marine in this town stepping that much out of line. Uh, Peters, Swanson, Matthews, you take the downtown Liberty District. Okay, uh, Gottschalk, you take Center Street, Slater, Wharton Avenue, Pyle, Bristol Street. You do know where Bristol Street is. Yes, sir, I sure do, Sergeant. That's where they got all them bowling alleys and penny arcades and dance halls. I always try to avoid that street whenever I'm in town on Liberty. Some of the folks that you meet there ain't too respectable. <laughs> well, we'll see you, Sergeant. Hold it. Gotcha. You take Bristol. Pile, you get uh, Palmdale Avenue. Right, Sergeant. Hold it. Palmdale, isn't that where... Uh... Girly shows, tattoo parlors, pool hall? Now, there's a street that's just full of sin, Sergeant. Slater, you got Palmdale, too. Pile, you move over to uh, Beacon Street. What's on Beacon? Gin joints. Now, that's another evil street. Evil, evil, evil. God, Chalk, you got Beacon. Mm. Ah, see here, Pile? There's the perfect street for you. Only two blocks long and right in back of us here. Woodlawn Lane. Anything on it? Too close to the MP station. No action at all. Perfect. There's your assignment, pile. All two blocks of Woodlawn Lane. Walk up, walk down. Just make sure it doesn't explode into violence. I'll do my best, Sergeant. Fine. I wouldn't trust Woodlawn Lane to anyone else. Now, don't leave it and report back to me at noon. Right, Sergeant. <laughs> I sure wish you would stay with me, Duke. I don't know a thing one about MP. It's no trouble. You've seen him working before. Never took no notice. Only lawman I ever knew was Sheriff Andy Taylor back home. Same thing. Just be firm, be tough. Tough? But Andy Taylor wasn't tough. He's real nice. Matter of fact, folks was always talking on how nice he was. OK, be nice. It doesn't matter. There's no action around here anyway. Sure would feel a whole lot better, though, if somebody wants to tell me what I'm supposed to do. Just make sure the guys are neat and behave themselves. Oh, and, uh, make sure they've washed behind their ears. You ain't gonna start pulling my leg, are you, Duke? <laughs> You'll be all right. Just relax. in the button factory. <laughs> I'm a military policeman, and I'm supposed to tell you fellers about things like collar button, things like that. In fact, these are kind of my first customers. Oh, you're a military policeman. Uh-huh. That's what it says here, military policeman. Or it would say that if there's room, so they just kind of boiled it down to initials. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is your first day on the job, right? Right. How'd you know that? Well, you see, that's our duty, to go around town checking on the MPs to make sure they do a good job. That's right, pal. We're checkers. Checkers, huh? Is that kind of like comparison shoppers? <laughs> exactly. I think the private here is doing well. What do you think? Not bad. Not bad at all. But uh, there were a couple of things. Well, we could give him a break. It's his first day on the job. We could excuse him. If you really think so. But what is it, fellers? Am I doing something wrong? Please tell me. We're not supposed to tell you. We hit a grade you, and then we make a report. Come on. I sure would appreciate it. Well, okay. 
Just this one. <laughs> uh, first thing, the armband. Is it wrong? Is it wrong? He don't know. He don't know. <laughs> How did they ever let you out in the street with an upside down? Upside? Yeah, it's got to be turned the other way. Sure. So when you put your arm up, people can read it. Sure. <laughs> and that gun belt. Well, is it wrong, Toad? He don't know. He don't know. He just don't know. Look, the gun belt is supposed to be worn down on the hips, close to the thigh, so you're ready for a quick draw. Like John Wayne does in the fighting CVs. Sure, pal. Well, I don't know about that. I kept asking him, but wouldn't nobody tell me. And that hat. Is that wrong, too? He don't, he don't know. know. That hat, what do you think that strap is for? It's got to be worn underneath the chin in case a windstorm comes sure, by. see, it won't blow off that way. <laughs> and one more thing. This weapon. This is a concealed weapon, and it's usually carried inside the pant leg, like that. But you can all them others, they's carrying theirs. You want to look better than they do, don't you? Now, let me look at you. Now you look like something. Don't he look better? A hundred percent improvement. Well, we have to gotta give this kid a good grade. He's a living dog. I think we picked a winner. <laughs> They said they was checkers. I think that they was pulling tricks. What a mean thing. What a mean thing to do. Is this one of your men, Sergeant? Yes, sir. Didn't I make myself clear this morning? Yes, sir. Then what is this? You don't seem very anxious to keep those stripes, Sergeant. Mean thing. What a mean thing to do. I'm sorry, son, these sergeant, but them fellers, they seem like the I know, I know. The thing is, we gotta keep you under wraps for the rest of the day. Hey, maybe you can just stay in and answer the phone, huh? Hey, that's a good idea. I can do that real good. I'll do just like I done this morning, remember? I'll take your calls and I'll write them down. That's, uh... <laughs> the break. Guard duty at the break. I can do that real good, too, Sergeant. You can bet your bottom dollar that those prisoners won't escape while I'm watching them. Out, out, that's out. <laughs> the back gate. It's quiet, it's remote, it's isolated. It's perfect. I got the perfect spot for you. Come on. Yes, sir, Sergeant. Anywhere you want to put me, I'll just go there. Any business? Nobody's come through all afternoon. Perfect. You're relieved. All right, pal. Now, take the duty here, stand guard until 1700. Then secure with that lock and report back to me. Is that clear? As clear as can be. You don't have to write it down. No. Just say it one more time. <laughs> secure at 1700. But until then, nobody gets in unless he has an ID card. Nobody. And anybody gets out of line, you simply do a raised pistol and you take him to the brig. Now, it's that simple, pal. All right? Let's see how you do. I'm coming in. You just come right ahead, Sergeant. You welcome as can be. You know why. Oh, no, no, no. You don't know me. I don't? You don't know anybody. You don't have friends. You don't know faces. You only have eyes for this little card. You don't let a single human being on this base without this card. Well, what Repeat, if... nobody through this gate without a card. With the card in, without, out. Right. Right. Now, look, pal. This is the easiest post on the entire base. Don't foul up. I still want to have these tomorrow. Right, Sergeant. OK. Ouch! <laughs> what are you doing? Nobody passes through here. What? You just told me I don't know you, so halt. That was a test. I said you don't let anybody through without a card. This card. Right. Hi, friend. Oh. ID card, please. What's that? I have to have an ID card. I have an appointment with Colonel Ray. 
makes no difference. It's not friends or faces. It's just that itty bitty card. Well, I don't have a card, but I do have an appointment. Now, if you don't mind. I I'm sorry, sir, but orders is orders. This is absurd. I am Brewster Horton, special counsel from Washington on assignment. Now, does that satisfy you? You still have to have a Marine ID card. Do you mean to say that you're actually going to stand there and not let me through? That's right, sir. Not without that card, my sergeant said. I don't have friends and I don't know faces. Nothing personal, sir. I'm sure if we met under happier circumstances, we'd be friends. Oh, <laughs> and while I don't know your face now, next time we meet, I'll know it. It's a big, friendly face. Matter of fact, you sort of favor my uncle, Ernest Spurgeon. Well, if you'll excuse me, sir. I've got to secure this gate anyhow. Paul! Oh, I'm going in. No, I told you who I am. What you are is my prisoner. Sorry, but you'll have to move along, so move along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yes, sir, we do have one of the men from your ship, huh? Uh, hey, yes, sir. Well, uh, as soon as you can send some men over here to call for him, sir. Yes, sir. Get him out of here. Uh, uh Commander, uh, this we'll is the most ridiculous we got it somewhere here. Ever been in it's right here, I think. And don't you tell oh, me what we can do when I can't do it. Somebody I'm shut that joker up! Right. Right. Put him in number four! One little boy! I'm sorry, man. I take care of you. Well, we got a real bad one. I demand that Colonel Gray be notified immediately. Believe me, when he hears of this, there is going to be trouble. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't think about this. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't think about this, sir. But the sergeant here said it won't take long. Wouldn't you like to something? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't think about this, sir. But the sergeant here said it won't take long. Wouldn't you like something? Yes, your name. It's Gomer Pie. Pie rhymes with fire. Makes it easy to remember. Believe me, I won't forget it. <laughs> yes, sir, we'll do that, Commander. Yes, sir. Well, Pyle, did you get that back gate secured? Uh-huh. I done exactly like you said, Sergeant. And if it hadn't been for this one feller... Briggs, Sergeant Carter. Briggs, Sergeant Carter. This is Colonel Gray, Sergeant. We're waiting for Mr. Horton. He's here on some assignment from Washington. Check all gates and let me know if he's returned to the base. Yes, sir. Give me the front gate. Like I said, Sergeant, there was only this one feller that tried to crash through. He didn't even have on a uniform. Seemed kind of nervy to me. Yeah, this is Carter here. Has Mr. Horton come through there? Horton. Horton. Well, let me know the minute he does. Give me the west gate. I can't imagine why he'd do a thing like that. He's a grown man, too. Had on a nice blue serge suit. He's a big fella with a big, friendly face. Uh, this is Sergeant Carter. Has Mr. Horton come through there? Well, check it, will you? Well, I wasn't taking no chances on you losing them stripes, so I took him back there and I clanged the door shut. Yes, huh? Well, let me know when he does. Yeah. Can't you see I'm busy? Oh, will you beat it? You're off duty. Yes, Sergeant. Give me the colonel's office. All right, I'll wait. Grown man, blue shirt suit, big fella with a big friendly face. In there. Flying shirt. Uh, Colonel, Mr. Horton's on the base. No, sir, not exactly. He's here. <laughs> well, I had to do something. He come barging through that gate like he owned this place. Don't you understand, Pyle? He does. Oh, you wouldn't lock up another Marine or a sailor or a soldier, even a second lieutenant. No, not you. You got to pull a pistol and take on a big shot. <laughs> What do you think will happen? Well, he's up there with the colonel right now. I dare say your name will come up. Offhand, I would say your next 50 or 60 years in the Marine Corps will not be fun and games. In fact, you'll probably be an old man before you get off KP. You might be the first private in history to make the garbage detail his life's work. Gosh, what'll I do? I don't know, Pyle. I really don't. All I can say is, if the idea of desertion ever crossed your mind, you'll never find a better time to look into it. Shoot, it can't be that bad. Oh, can it? 
They're gonna get you up there. They're gonna work you over. And when you come out, you're gonna be the most chewed up. <laughs> Duty hat, Sergeant Carter. Yes, sir, he's here. Right away, sir. Was it? The Colonel. He wants to see you on the double. Well, I guess this is it. Mm -hmm. Could you go with me? I'm gonna be busy here. I was a sergeant in charge, remember? I'm going to be busy taking off these stripes. <laughs> Pyle, I do have one suggestion. If they offer you a cigarette and a blindfold, take them both. I have been on many military installations in my career, but I have never been subjected to... Yes? Send him in. That's the man. Hi, sir. Private Pye reporting his order, sir. He's the one, all right. Well, I don't know what you're going to do in this situation, Colonel, but I can tell you what the Army would do. I'll handle it, sir. Good. Pyle, do you have any idea what you did? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, now, sir. Then let me make the situation quite clear. In fact, I'll tell you exactly what you did. A very important, influential man from Washington asked to enter this base. You were on duty. You followed regulations, you carried out orders, and conducted yourself in a military manner. Well done, Private. You're dismissed. Dis dismissed? All right. All right, Colonel. You've made your little speech. Now do you know what I'm going to do? I am going to go back to Washington. Yes, sir. You're going back to Washington, and you're going to tell them that when they take security measures at Camp Henderson, they really take them. Why, even an official from Washington can't get through without proper identification. You can't ask for tighter security than that. Isn't that what you're going to tell them? Well, I... Well... I mean, that should really please them back there these strict precautionary measures. You're dismissed, Private. Then I'm not really in any trouble? Golly! <laughs> I can't wait to get back and tell Sergeant Carter. I won't even know how to explain it to him. You just tell him what I said, that you followed regulations, carried out orders, and conducted yourself in a military manner. Regulations. <laughs> What's the matter? Do you happen to have a pencil and some paper? It's my memory. <laughs> what are you here? What are you here? Why, why, well, what are you doing here? You'll never guess in a million years. Why, why, well, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in a break? You'll never guess in a million years. This is going to come as a real surprise to you. What? What, what happened? What did the colonel say? Well, what did you hear, Sergeant? What did you hear? Pyle, what did he say? Oh, I, it's a good thing I wrote it down. He said, I followed regulations and carried out orders and conducted myself in a military manner. Are you kidding? He bragged on me and said dismissed. Well, how about that, huh? <laughs> the old man's okay, huh? He backed you up against a big brass. Guess you don't have to worry about them stripes now, neither. Hey, that's right. <laughs> I told him what you done, too, Sergeant. Hey, you did, huh? You put in a plug for me, huh? You told him I was the one that instructed you in the rules and regulations? <laughs> I told him what you said, how this never would have happened if it'd been you, that you would have let that man in without an ID card. <laughs> what did he say to that? Oh, I wrote that down, too. <laughs> Sergeant Carter will not go on liberty next weekend. He will report for MP duty, checking ID cards at the back gate all day Saturday and Sunday. I think that's Sunday. Must be Sunday. It's got a big curly letter in front. Must be an ass. Like to see it, my handwriting is so full of it.
Pyle, USMC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. You gotta see this place to believe it, Vince. When I'm not working, it's all sandy white beaches, a party here and there, sailing, surfing, and beautiful hula girls. Now I know why they put the Lulu in Honolulu. <laughs> That's cute. Sounds like he's got it made. Yeah, leave it to my old pal Nick Hollenrake to always get stationed in the best places. I told all the gals here about you, Vince, and I've already got a long, cool, tropical drink sitting here in the shell of a pineapple with a gardenia floating on top just waiting for you. Hmm? If you can steal any time, don't miss out on this. It's once in a lifetime. I got a house right on the beach with plenty of room, so come on down. That's great, Sarge. You going? Am I going? Am I going? Man, I got 10 days accumulated leave saved up. 10 old days I've been hoarding, just waiting for the right opportunity. And brother, this is it. Am I going, he asked. And would you like to know how? How? Well, we got marine jets winging out of here every day, and some of them go straight to Honolulu. And who do you think is going to hop a ride on one of them little jet jobs? Hey, that's great, Sarge. You got nothing to keep you here. I mean, there's nothing coming up. You're in the clear. Good. Oh, just this. Yeah, what's that? A memo came through this morning about the test for PFC. Six of our men haven't taken it yet. Hmm? Those meatballs in the Marines for over a year and still privates. Well, I want a whole platoon of PFCs. In fact, I want a whole platoon of PFCs before I go to Honolulu. When are they giving that test? Tomorrow. Good. That'll make a nice going away present for me. Oh, PFCs. Uh, I don't know. What do you mean? Pile. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know that long kid would be one of the last ones to make PFC? Wouldn't you just know it? Boy, it stings me. It really stings me. Sarge, a minute ago you were happy as a lark talking about your trip. Why let something like this spoil it? Well, it's important. I mean, think back to what you were talking about. Hawaii, those sandy white beaches, the hula girls, the tropical drink. Yeah. <laughs> the gardenia floating around on top. That's right. You're right. You're right. This is a golden opportunity to go to Honolulu, and I'm not going to let them foul it up. Believe me, I'm not going to. I'm just going to walk over and talk to them real calm-like. Calm and easy, easy and calm. Stupid, stupid, stupid! <laughs> the six of you, the last six. Now, everybody else in this platoon has made PFC except you six meatballs. Now, what is it with you? Well, what about you, Lipton? What's your excuse? I don't have one. That's no excuse. <laughs> Would you like to hear my excuse, Sergeant? No. I got one, and I thought... I don't want to hear it. But it might explain why. Pyle, I said I didn't want to hear excuses. Is that clear? Yes, it is, Sergeant. See, it's just that as long as you was expecting an excuse from Private Lipton, he didn't have one, I thought I'd tell you mine so you wouldn't be disappointed. Knock it off! Now, all of you, listen up. That test is being given tomorrow, so get on the stick. Remember, it's for your good, not mine. But I want all PFCs in this platoon. Is that clear? Ah, sir. I can't hear you. <laughs> ah, ah, sir. sir. All right, you take that test and you make it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Never did get to tell him my excuse. What is your excuse, Gone? Well, it's just that I wished I didn't have to take that test. Why? It's not hard. That ain't what I'm afraid of. Then what? Well, maybe it won't make too much sense. Well, what is it? Well... Fact is, I couldn't be no happier than I am right now. To tell you the truth, I like things just the way they are. Huh? Remember back in boot camp, Sergeant Carter told us that the private is the backbone of the Marine Corps. Well, fact is, I like being the backbone. <laughs> and another thing is I wouldn't want people to think that I'm getting uppity, and that's just what the folks back home might think if I got me a stripe on my arm, that I'm getting uppity. Oh, now you're putting me on. No, I ain't, Duke. Honest. 
So you see, I'm better off being a private because I'm a whole lot better at followership than I am at leadership. Gomer, so you see, I don't care a whole lot about being a private first class is what it boils down to. Well, Gomer, you should take the test. Well, I'll take the test, all right. But I know how I am, Duke. If I ain't interested in something, I just can't concentrate. That's how I am. I just can't concentrate if I ain't interested. Sergeant Vincent J. Carter, Marine Jet X-22007, non-stop destination Honolulu. Aloha and ta-ta. Bom, 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 bom. Great, Sarge. Four days from today, I'll be wearing a garland of flowers around my neck. And will I be thinking of you? No, I will not. Nothing personal. <laughs> What's in there? You want to see what the well-dressed sergeant wears on the beach in Hawaii? Huh? <laughs> well, what do you think? One thing's sure, you won't get lost. Can I help it if you got no taste? Uh, what's the news on the PSC test? The results come in yet? Didn't you hear me? Did you get the results on the PFC test? Yeah, I heard you. Well? Look, Sarge, you're not going to let this spoil your trip now. Oh, come on, come on. Naturally, I could have told you. You didn't have to tell me. I could have told you. Pyle is the only one who didn't make it. Sarge, you got five out of six. That's good. That is not good. I want six out of six. That's what I'm going to get. Six out of six. <laughs> Adams, Caloruso, Duncan, Lipton, Pyle, Rigsby, all of you falling right in front of me. I just got the results of the test you all took for PFC. The following men made it. Oh, wait a minute. Why should I waste all that breath reading off the names of those who made it? It'll be much easier just to read the names of those who didn't. <laughs> the following men did not pass the test for PFC. Pile. That is the whole list of all the men who did not make it. All the rest of you earned your strike. All right, everybody except Pile, fall out. Pile. Remember the other day when you said you had a reason for not wanting to take the test and I didn't want to listen? Remember? Yes, Sergeant. Well, now I happen to have a little extra time. I'm ready to hear your excuse for taking the test and failing. Let's hear it. I'm waiting. How did you fail that test? How? I couldn't help it, Sergeant. All the time I was taking the test, my mind just kept wandering. Wandering? How far could it wander in that vacant lot? It's like I told you. Where was your head, Pyle? Where was your head? Well, like I said, my mind just kept wandering. I kept thinking about all the happy times I've had as a private. Huh? I just couldn't stop thinking about the time that you told us that the private was the backbone of the Marine Corps. That's correct. I'm still waiting for your excuse. How did you fail? I'm leading up to it. All right, leave. <laughs> it's like this. If I pass the test for PFC, 
then they might want me to take the test for corporal and then sergeant. And I'm just so happy like I am. What? That is, I guess I just plain ain't interested. You ain't interested? I reckon not. Uh-huh. Well, I reckon we'll just have to get you interested. In fact, we'll just have to get everybody here interested in getting you interested. All right, everybody, over here. Now, here's the story. While is the only one who hasn't made PFC, I want a 100% PFC platoon. And you are going to help me to get it. How? There's another PFC test being given tomorrow, and Pyle here is going to take it. Now, this is an order. You are all taking a two-hour shift tonight, right around the clock, helping Pyle bone up for that test tomorrow. When he walks in there in the morning, I want his head so full it'll be coming out of his ears. You see, I think I know the reason for his failing that test. One word. Stupidness. <laughs> so you are going to help him get over his stupidness. Is that clear? Aye, 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 Sergeant. Is that clear to you, Pyle? Yes, Sergeant. I must be crazy to stick around here and let you drive me nuts. I don't know why I do it, but I do. Every day it's something different. It's always stupidness. Stupidness. Stupid. Same thing over and over and over. Garson? Garson? Garson, I got the part about a scene in the 45. Oh, that's wonderful. What time is it? 2.15. I'm not getting paid for overtime. Two to four is later shift. Where is he? I was just coming for you. The patient is all yours, doctor. I heard a nice girl, but this is ridiculous. Hey, Duke. Hey, Sure nice of you fellas to help me out like this. You know that? Yeah, I know that. You're a good friend, Duke, a real good friend. But we don't have too much time. Uh, you sleepy? No, I'm wide awake. I really am. See? My eyes ain't even bloodshot yet. I'm at least a bit tired. Good. If you feel yourself getting sleepy, just throw some cold water on your face. Main thing is to stay awake. I'm fine. Okay, good. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> until I tell you to. Now, you've got one hour, 60 minutes to complete this test. Now, if any of you finish early, hand in your books and leave the room quietly because other men around you may be still working. Remember, no talking. The word is quiet. Okay? Everybody ready? Go. <laughs> You heard what happened to Pyle at the PSC test. Yeah, I guess you did. He fell asleep. Right in the middle of the test, he fell asleep. That yo-yo? Well, let me tell you something. I'm not gonna let him spoil my trip. I'm going to Hawaii and I'm gonna have fun. Do you hear me? Fun, fun, fun. I'm gonna enjoy. <laughs> Sorry. But aren't you packing kind of early? I'm in a hurry. When Friday morning gets here, I go. The sooner I get away from Pyle, the happier I'll be. I've got to get this press and pick up some stuff at the PX. You got my travel orders typed up yet? I was going to do it this morning, Sarge. Well, get moving. I want them on the colonel's desk ready for his signature right away. Okay, Sarge. He fell asleep. He fell asleep. He... <laughs> <laughs> Well, look who's here, Sleeping Beauty. 
Oh, is, is Sergeant Carter around? Look, Pyle, I wouldn't go looking for Sergeant Carter if I were you. Guess he is pretty sore at me, huh? You pulled some buttes in the past, Pyle, but this one tops them all. I know. That's the reason I'm here. I wanted to apologize to Sergeant Carter. Well, he won't be back for a while. Oh, do you mind if I wait for him? Wait for him. Thank you. Hey, Corporal, did somebody just ship in? What? I just seen that bag on the bunk over there, and I wondered if somebody was coming in. No one's coming in, pile. Someone's going out. Sergeant Carter, if you must know. Sergeant Carter? Right. Where's he going? Honolulu. You mean he's leaving? That's right, pile. You can't go to Honolulu without leaving. It's all said it's official. It will be if I ever get these orders typed and signed by the colonel. Effective 9 a.m. Friday morning. Golly, when did all this take place? Pyle, will you quit pastoring me? Now I know why Carter wants to get away from you. pretty strong in Hawaii. You got any with darker glass? Sure. Ah, how do you like it? Yeah, it's not bad. Not... Hey, Sergeant. He's the darkest you got. Sergeant, could I speak to you a minute? At 1.30 in the afternoon? Isn't it way past your bedtime? <laughs> I know you're sore at me, Sergeant. You got a perfect right to be. But I just want you to know that I'm sorry. Good. Now beat it. I'm busy. I've got some things to take care of. That's because you're gonna leave, huh? That's right. I'm leaving. How did you know? Corporal told me. Sergeant, why are you leaving? You want to know why? I'll tell you. To get away from a certain meatball, that's why. That's what I thought. You mean me, don't you? Do you know any other meatballs, Private Pile? No, because I didn't pass that test. And I didn't make PSC. Sergeant, I feel just awful. Just because I fail that test, that's the only reason you're leaving? I mean, if I passed the test, you wouldn't go? Pyle, if you passed the test, why would I want to go? There'd be such a celebration, a banquet, parties. I'd be crazy to leave. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. But you didn't pass the test, so I am going. Now, if you don't mind, I have some packing to do. Surely I'll take these glasses and uh, some razor blades, some toothpaste, some aftershave. Let me understand. You want to take this test again? Is that right, Private? That's right, sir. Well, according to this report, you failed it twice within a week. Yes, sir, I know. I can't imagine why you should have so much trouble. I should think the second time you took it, you should have been able to pass it with your eyes closed. Oh, no, sir, that don't work. <laughs> well, we want to see our men try to advance themselves, so it shouldn't be too difficult to arrange another test for you. We'll notify you, probably in about a month. A month? Oh, no, sir, not a month. I can't wait that long. I got to take the test tomorrow. Uh, that is, with the lieutenant's permission, sir. What's a rush, Private? You think you're going to get the same questions you had yesterday? Oh, no. We keep changing the tests, you know. The next one you get will be entirely different. I don't care. I'll take them all, but I just got to take it tomorrow. Well, this is a bit irregular. Please, it's very important. Please, sir. There's a group from A Company scheduled to take the test tomorrow. You can sit with them. Thank you. I really appreciate it, sir. I really appreciate it. Stop writing. Check to see if your names are clearly written on all your papers. Leave them there on your desk. Return to your company area. Just a minute, Pyle. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. 
How do you think you did, Pyle? Oh, I'm sure if I iced, I'd like to make a hundred percent. I'm sure you did, too. All right, come on, let's have it. Huh? A little piece of paper you've got hidden in your pocket. Your cheat notes. My what? Now, you know what I mean. A little special something you've got in your pocket that helped you get that hundred percent. You mean this? Really not a very good picture of him. Sergeant Carter, this is what helped you pass your test? He's the reason I got interested in taking the test and passing it. Well, what's that, Sarge? You said it. In 45 minutes, I'll be on my way to paradise. Now, remember, for the next 10 days, you're in charge of the platoon. Keep him on the ball. You can count on me. Good. Well, I guess that's about it. My travel letters, you got them? Huh? I don't have them. What do you mean you don't have them? You said the colonel sent them over yesterday all signed. He did. I put them right there on the desk. I thought you took them. Huh? Well, look in the back. Uh, go through the lockers everywhere. Wally at the filling station back home used to say if you keep your desk nice and clean, you'd never misplace anything. A place for everything and everything in its place. He was right, don't you think, old sergeant? I'm not interested, Pyle. Whatever you got on your mind, I'm not interested. I ain't what I got on my mind, it's what I got on my sleeve. Huh? You made PFC? Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Lieutenant gave me special permission to take the test over again yesterday, and guess what? I passed. Yeah, yeah. That's great. I'm not only passed, Sergeant, but I made 100%. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. But the best part of this is now you don't have to leave. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what you said, remember? That if I made PSC, you wouldn't have to leave. Huh? Well, I didn't want to see you transfer out to High Warrior. <laughs> transfer? What are you talking about? Wasn't you going to transfer to High Warrior? No, Pyle. I don't know where you get your information. I wasn't asking for a transfer. I'm going to Hawaii on a furlough, a vacation. Vacation? Yeah. You was going on a vacation? Yes, as soon as I find my travel orders, my travel orders are missing. Have you found them yet? I don't see them. Sergeant? Not now, Pyle, but keep looking. They gotta be there someplace. But, Sergeant? Don't bother me, Pyle. I got a plane to catch. Not anymore. Where are you looking back there? Did you look under that? <laughs> I haven't got a plane to catch. <laughs> See, I thought you was leaving for good, because I couldn't make PFC. And in the PX, you said if I did make PFC, then you didn't have to go. Yeah? So I come by here earlier to tell you that I passed the test. And I seen your travel orders on the desk there. And? So I took them to the colonel and told him you didn't want them. I'd go right back over there and get them, except he tore them up while I was standing there, a little bitty pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just a little old vacation. You wasn't going to transfer out at all. But what difference, as long as I made PFC? Ain't that right, Sergeant? And I did make PFC. Oh, me. Oh, me, oh, me. You are surprised, I can tell. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sure did go fast, don't you, Sergeant? Whoosh! <laughs> hey, there goes another one. You know, sometimes I just like to look up at them planes and guess where they're going. Do you ever do that, Sergeant? Just look up there and try to guess where they're going? Well, I bet they're going to different places all over the world. Whoosh! <laughs> now, there's what I call a clean window. Must be this new cleaning rack I got. Really a shirt. <laughs> sure does clean good, though. You know where I found it? In the garbage. That's right. How'd you know? I guessed. Well, to be perfectly honest, can't blame anybody for throwing it out. Now, where in the world would anybody wear a shirt like this? 
I wouldn't know, pile. I wouldn't know. <laughs> MC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. enough brushing you're coming through the other side well i want it to be right heck sakes dude since i'm gonna be best man at that wedding tomorrow i won't look my best you're wearing your dress blues ain't you i suppose although black would be more appropriate black black's what you wear at funerals weddings funerals tragedy is tragedy oh come on dude this is gonna be real high spirited i get to carry the ring what with me being best man and all, then I give it to him, and he gives it to her, and she gets to wear it for the rest of her born days. But I get to carry it first, and that's a real honor. Gomer! Gomer! I got it! I got it! Greatest ring you ever saw in your life! Let's have a look. Well, well, it just came in the mail. Been in the family for six generations. You never saw anything like it. It's beautiful. But my grandmother wore it, and my great-grandmother before her, she wore it at her wedding. It's, It's got diamonds. Did, did I give it to you? No. Well, I, I lost it. I, I must have dropped it on the way in. Uh, it, uh, come on, come on, Fussell. Make up your mind which way you're going. Well, well, so, so, sorry, Sergeant. I, I can't. When you came in, you didn't happen to... Wait. Wait. Here it is. Here it is. Jim's kind of got the jitter, Sergeant. What with his wedding tomorrow now? He thought he'd lost his ring. I don't want to hear one more word about a ring or marriage. Not one more word. Nothing, you understand? I've had it up to here with you two guys in that wedding. Two weeks gone, I've heard nothing else. This is a marine base, not the little church around the corner. <laughs> now, the rest of you knuckleheads, listen up. We have a field lecture on demolitions in 15 minutes. We'll assemble at 1100. Oh. <laughs> Golly, look at that thing shine. All them sparklers, why, that's a regular 4th of July. Not another one in the world like it. Wouldn't be a Purcell wedding without this ring. Yeah, you better put that rock away. We gotta get moving. Whoa, 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 where will I put it? Under your pillow? <laughs> May maybe in my shaving kit. How about under the mattress? M maybe I better just carry it right with me. Boy, I, I sure wish I didn't have to go to that lecture. Now, in clearing an enemy field, the mine detector is used. It can spot any buried metal object. The mine is then uncovered and removed. To give you an idea of its destructive power, we're gonna detonate this mine. It'll need two men for a digging detail. Pile, Purcell. Pile, Purcell! What is it, Archie? If the national effort can have your assistance for a few minutes, grab them shovels. Move it! <laughs> All right, good enough. Now get back with the others. 
I was digging. Well, that's tough. Oh, oh, please, Sergeant. You don't know what that ring means. It, it, it's an heirloom. It's priceless. It's priceless. I mean, I couldn't get married without that ring. Oh, please, Sergeant. Please. Suck it off! <laughs> okay, Peter. You better disconnect. All right, the rest of you guys, come on, Donnie, and help us look. Make it fast. Come on, let's go, go, go. On your hands and knees, let's go. All right, let's give it up. Oh, just a little more, Sarge. Please, Sarge. That's all I said. We already wasted half the morning. We're not going to take all day looking for a ring. Heirloom or no heirloom. Now, let's go. Sure, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Sergeant, it's just a terrible thing to lose. It's the most beautiful ring I think I nearly ever saw. It was real sparkly. There it is. Hey, how about that? I must have picked up the wrong jacket. It was in the pocket the whole time. We didn't have to do all that digging night long. Ain't that a good job, Sergeant? <laughs> Ain't it? Y'all see it, Gina? Yeah. What you do with the ring? Got it right here. Oh, no. No, it, it's gone. It's gone again. Oh, here. Here it is. You sure gave me a fry. Gomer, look. You take it. You're the best man. You hold it for me. Me? Well, I wouldn't want to Look, I'm so mixed up, I, I know I'll lose it someplace. Please, you hold it. I, I keep misplacing it, and I about have heart failure every time I go to look for it. But please, you keep it. Well, where will I put it? I, I don't know. Just put it someplace. I got it. The best place to keep a ring is where it's supposed to be. I keep it on my finger here. It should fit my pinky. <laughs> it, it won't fall off? No, it's good and tight. We should have thought of this before. Now, tomorrow when you want it, I'll just slip it off, and there you are. What's the matter? It's my tight. But you gotta be able to get it off. <laughs> if I had a little butter. Come on, you guys, inspection. now, Sergeant? Uh, no, sir. Uh, you see, sir, uh, well, it's a wedding ring. That's your wedding ring, Private? No, sir. I thought you told me... Sir, it is a wedding ring, but it ain't mine. It's Private Purcell's. You're wearing Private Purcell's wedding ring? <laughs> sir, Private Purcell is getting married. To him? <laughs> oh, no, sir. He's marrying Christy Parker. She's a real nice girl. You'd really like her, sir. Wonderful. Sergeant. Sir. I suggest you check your men out before inspection. I would say that man was slightly out of uniform, wouldn't you? Well, the... Unless there's a new regulation, which I don't know about, which calls for wedding rings on pinkies. <laughs> That'll be all, Sergeant. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Get that thing off! Get it off! I can't. I reckon my finger's too fat. Yeah? Well, I'm gonna work it till you're so thin it drops off. <laughs> I warned you. I have 
nothing against a man and a woman of legal age being duly joined together in the bonds of holy matrimony. Nothing against it at all. But when my lectures sabotaged, my inspection turned into a shambles, and the entire platoon performance record shot down in flames. Well, are you in pain? Yes, sir. Uh, it pains me to hear how the platoon performance record got shot down in flames. Uh, I'm sure sorry, sir. And you are going to be sorrier. As a little reminder that you are both Marines on a duty status, you will put in a few hours extra duty tonight here in the bakery. But, Sergeant, tomorrow morning's my wedding. I can't be... Hold it! I told you, I don't want to hear no more about a wedding. I don't want to hear anything about it, see anything about it, nothing. That word is not to be used in my presence in any shape, manner, or form. Is that clear? Okay, Charlie. Right, Ben. They're all yours. Okay. You, get over and start massaging those racks. I like them nice and clean. And you, over here. Stop working on that. We got to get 600 loaves out by tomorrow. Well, get in there and move it around. Move it around. Give me plenty of wrist action. Atta boy. That's fine. That's beautiful. Plenty of wrist in there. That makes it nice and light and fluffy. Very good. I'll make a dough boy out of you yet. <laughs> Get a dough boy. Move it. Move it. Watch those wrists. You, keep working. At least you'll be sure to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I need, sleep. The one thing about working hard, you're too tired to remember you're nervous. Just think, in a few more hours, you will be a married husband and all. But to think that I'm all part of the ceremony, and I'll do it right to you, and depend on that, I'll be right there with the ring. It's gone. Where is it? Get off. You lost my wedding oh, ring. Come on, where's the ring? Well, it must be around here someplace. I'll get a flashlight. But we gotta find it, Cobra. Knock it off. Oh, we gotta find it. We will. We'll just backtrack every step of the way. You see anything? Look carefully. It's not around here anywhere. Oh, think, Homer, think. When's the last time you saw it? Let me see now. I had it at supper, and then we come to work here at the bakery. What, 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 did you have it then? Yeah, I remember now. Up until the time I started working on all that dough, you know, with the wrist action. So it could have come off and... Yeah, that dough was gooey enough, and with the butter and all, I think I know where your ring is. Your wedding ring's baked in one of them there 600 loaves of bread. Oh, I guess the ring's lost for good now. And after six generations in the family, Boy, poor Chrissy, she's sure gonna be disappointed. Well, maybe we can find it. It's got to be in one of them loaves of bread. But there's 600 loaves, Gomer, 600. Then we'll just have to look through every single loaf, piece by piece, can't overlook one single crumb. It's just the corporal taking sandwiches to the guardhouse. Sandwiches. Yeah, just sandwiches made out of bread. Right. Before we start on the lows, we better check those out. Hold it. Don't eat those sandwiches. Excuse us, Corporal of the Guards, but you mustn't bite into that bread. Excuse me. Can, can I see that one? What's going on? There was an accident at the bakery, and something fell into the bread dough. 
Something in the bread dough. What? What fell in it? Much blast. It's not in there. Close. I almost ate that. Well, what is it? What fell in it? It's not here either. Are these all the sandwiches you made? All except for the one I gave Lieutenant Peterson, the officer of the day. That might be just where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, thank you, fellas. Enjoy your sandwiches. <laughs> Six hundred loaves is sure a lot of bread, ain't it? It sure is. Of course, we don't have to go through all six hundred. We've already been through that, and that they made the sandwiches out of. So all we got to do is five hundred ninety-nine. <laughs> Give me the first one. We'll get started. Cut it off. Honey. Now, careful. We don't want to scratch it. All right. <laughs> ain't in this one. Gomer, we'll never be able to go through all six hundred loaves like this. Wait a minute, I got an idea. <laughs> it ain't in this low. Someone's coming. What are you guys doing here? Get out of there. Come on, snap it up. What is all this? Well, I was here working earlier, and I lost something, and I come back to look for it. What'd you lose? Uh, the wedding ring that Jim here is supposed to get married with today. Oh, the ring? You lost the ring? The ring he's getting married with? <laughs> That's a hot one. <laughs> we figure it's somewhere here in a loaf of bread. You lost the ring and a loaf of bread? <laughs> if it's all right with you, Sergeant, we'd kind of like to get it back. Sure, go ahead. Boy, I can see the ceremony now. <laughs> with this bread, I thee wed. <laughs> and then he puts the loaf of bread on a finger, get it? <laughs> Which loaf is it in? Well, we don't rightly know, so we're going to have to go through every single one, you know, and slice them up. But, but, Sergeant, The first can't... one that lays a finger on this bread, I let him have it. You want to play hide-and-seek outside, not in my bread. Come on, out. But, 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 outside. But, Let's go. But, but, Sergeant, maybe we could just use the fork and kind of punch around in them. Charlie Hacker served bread full of puncture holes? No, sir. Sixteen years I've been baking. I never served no factory seconds. No <laughs> dice. Outside. Out. But, out. But, but, Sergeant, this ring's kind of special, Sergeant. Couldn't we just look in a few... Out! out! <laughs> Hurry it up out of here! Out! I sure feel bad about this, Jim, and it's all my fault, too. Here you picked me out of all your friends to be your best man and trusted me with the ring for your beloved, and I let you down. It's okay, Gomer. It was just an accident. But there must be something we can do. Sergeant Carter says that there ain't no situation that a good Marine can't overcome. Oh, look, we've had it. You heard that mess, Sergeant. He won't let us near that bread. He won't let us touch it. Look, we, we better just forget all of it. Wait a minute. Just a blessed instant. What? Maybe there is something we can do. Oh, what, what is it? 
William. I got this idea, but it's going to take bravery. But, but, but how? What? Well, first of all, we've got to go get Sergeant Carter. Carter? The way he feels about the wedding? And you're going to wake him up at 4 o'clock in the morning? Well, that's where the bravery comes in. <laughs> Come on, let's go. sake, I hope this is all just a very bad dream. It ain't no dream, it's me. You see, we lost the ring again. Uh, what is this overwhelming urge you have for self-destruction? I got this idea. And I got an idea, too. It's what to do with nitwits who wake up their sergeant in the middle of the night. I'll give you the details tomorrow, but for now, get out of here. But, Sergeant, a fellow Marine's in trouble, and you're the only one who can help. And I know you'll help because you're his only hope. Never mind, Gomer. Sorry we bothered you, Sergeant. But, Jimmy, how can you get married tomorrow? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're trying to tell me something. Maybe it's a bad sign. I don't know. All I know is when I tell Chrissy she's going to probably want to call off the wedding anyway. You know how superstitious brides are. You mean call off the wedding? Well, everything's going against it. Everything. It's too much. The, the sergeant's right. Why should he have to be bothered with all of this? It's not his problem. Why should he have to help out? Forget it. Nothing says I have to get married. Sorry, Sergeant. Get off this bed. <laughs> marry, don't marry. That's your problem. Mine's getting some shot eye. Now get out of here, or I throw you in a brick. But, Sergeant, you can... Out, out! You want the brick? Out! Get out of here! Out! Get out! 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 out, 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 out. How much time till mess call, Sergeant? Fifty-five minutes, sir. We'll be close. Very well. I'll issue the necessary instructions. <laughs> Hold up on the bread, Charlie. Huh? We gotta check it for that missing ring. Nobody hacks up my bread. You wanna find prizes? Buy yourself some Cracker Jack. <laughs> Orders from the top, Charlie. The Colonel wants that ring found. The Colonel ordered my bread ripped up for a tin ring? Relax. Nobody's gonna rip it up. We're gonna find it with a mine detector. <laughs> All right, men, in here. All right, let's spread out the bread, huh? <laughs> okay, start right here. You should have found it by now. That's the way it always is when you lose something. You never do find it till the very last place you look. I don't know why that is, but that's the way it always is. Well, are you sure you had it here in the bakery? Now, don't you worry. Wouldn't surprise me none if it wasn't in loaf number 600, the very last one. It is in the last one. It's in this one. Better make sure. But it's just got to be, Sergeant. If it ain't in any of the others, and this is the last one, why, it's just... It ain't. Work. All right, secure the gear. I'm sorry, Jim. Hey, I got something here, Sarge. What do you got in that pocket? Keys, change? 
No, in this pocket, I just keep my hanky. Don't know why that gadget should buzz around my hanky. <laughs> Shazam! Well, how do you do? Now, I remember, my hands got all gooey in that dough, and I wiped them off on my hanky. That must have been when the ring come loose. The ring was in my pocket the whole time, Sergeant. Wasn't no need to wake you and the Colonel after all. How was all that? That's a good joke. Ain't that a good joke? Hey, uh, Vince, be my guest. <laughs> James Purcell, take this woman, Christine Parker, to be your lawfully wedded wife. I do. And do you, Christine Parker, take this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. The ring, please. Let's have it. Give me just a second. Come on, Gomer. Come on, Gomer. I have it off the jiffy. <laughs> you wouldn't have any butter, would you, Chaplin? <laughs> Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Well, uh, well, well, did you have to tag along tonight? Baby, I had big plans for you and me. You said we were going to be alone tonight, just you and me alone. Come on, baby, I haven't seen you in a whole month. What do you want me to do, Vince? Now, Eileen is an old friend of the family. She's staying with me, and I'm not going to go off and leave her by herself. But tonight? Tonight, of all nights? Sorry, Vince, it's double date or no date at all. But it's late. Where am I going to find... Double date or no date at all. Come on, be fair. I haven't seen you for a whole month, and at the last minute you throw me a curve like this? Come up with a guy for a double date. It ain't fair. It just ain't fair. Double date or no date at all. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. I understand, Fred. It is Saturday night. It is the last minute. Have a good time. Uh, look, Fred, can you recommend somebody? I thought of him. I thought of him. I thought of him. Him too. Okay, thanks. I hate to bother you, Sergeant, but could I have my pass? I didn't get a chance to pick mine up this morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sergeant. Hey, Slater, come here. Yes, Sergeant? You know, being a sergeant, I don't ordinarily socialize with guys of a lower rank than me, but... Well, I kind of like you, kid, so I'm willing to make an exception in your case. You see, I have this girl who has a friend, a real gorgeous dish, and I'd be happy to do you a favor and take you along. 
<laughs> Real nice of you to ask, Sergeant, but I'm already set for tonight with my own girl. Uh, nice of you to ask, though, Sergeant. Thank you. Slater. Yes, Sergeant? Can you recommend somebody? Well, everybody in the barracks is gone, except Gomer. I left him reading a magazine. Never. I refuse to sink that low. Sorry, Mint. It's either double date or no date at all. Hey, Sergeant. Hi, Pa. What you doing? I was just reading the real behind-the-scenes stories of Ann Margaret. Do you know she hadn't had an easy life? Yeah, uh, look, She's Pa... She's had her trials and tribulations just like the rest of us. That's all very interesting. Just to look at her up on the screen singing and dancing, you'd think she didn't have a care in the world. But she's known heartaches and disappointments. Just think that... That's horrible. all very interesting, but will you pay attention? I've got something important to ask you. Well, yes, Sergeant. Have you got a date for tonight? No, I hadn't. Good. I've got a big surprise for you. How would you like to go on a double date with me? You want me to go on a date with you? That's right. <laughs> well, that's a real honor, Sergeant. It really is. And I'm proud to know that you think enough of me to ask. But I think I'll just go to the movie here on the base tonight. That's how you're going to spend a Saturday night? Sitting in the movies? I don't mind. Well, look, Pyle, I can't let you do it. Do what? Sit in the movies all by yourself. Well, I don't mind, Sergeant. Don't you worry about me. I'll be just fine, honest. Now, look, Pyle, this is your sergeant you're talking to. I can tell when you're putting on an act. But I'm not putting on... You'd a... much rather go out with a girl, but being the shy, lonely type of fellow you are, you don't have a girl. I understand. That's why it's my duty to fix you up with a date. But I don't want a date tonight. It's lonely. I'm very happy. You're just saying that. You're not really happy. Yes, I am. No, you're not. You're miserable. You're here, miserable. You think so, Sergeant. And I'm not asking you to go. I'm ordering you. You're ordering? Ordering, ordering. Now, you get dressed. You're going on a double date with me, and you're going to have fun. <laughs> Gomer Pyle? What kind of a name is that for a human being? What's a Gomer Pyle? Honey, he's a very nice guy. He's got a lot of class. Well, that'll be the day when you come up with somebody classy. As I tell you, he's from the South. So he's from the South. So what? What do you mean, so what? Are you kidding? Well, he comes from one of them aristocrat families from the South. You know, they're loaded with dough. Loaded. Vance, are you putting me on? Baby, would I lie to you? Only when your mouth is moving. <laughs> Lover, take my word for it. This Gomer Pyle is the real McCoy. Anyway, who does he have to be for this friend of yours? Who's she? What do you mean, who's she? That's right, who's she? Well, she happens to be something special, too. She comes from a very prominent family, society. Yeah, she's a society girl. Society? Where do you come to society? Are you doubting my word? Because if you are, you can just... I'm not, I'm not. Look, <laughs> I know it's going to work out great. Your friend and Gomer will have a good time and... You and me can kind of sneak off and be by ourselves for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? A society girl. And you're going out with her, huh? And you were going to the movies. Come on, come on. Well, golly, Sergeant, I don't know. Well, what's the matter? Well, I ain't never been out with a society girl before. Richest girl I was ever out with was Elsie Tippett. Her daddy made false teeth over in Mount Pilot. Stop worrying. It'll be fine. Come on, come on. Get dressed. Well, at least with Elsie Tippett, there were lots of things we could talk about. Gum conditions and loose dentures. I wouldn't know how to act in front of a society girl. Look, will you stop making a big thing out of this? It's just one evening. Now, come on, come on. Move it. I don't know, Sergeant. I just feel out of place. I'm just a fella who used to work in a filling station back home. Pile. I mean, I know about filling up tanks with guys and adding a quarter oil and fixing flat tires. But what I know about society, what do we talk about? Who says you have to talk? Just sit. Now, look, come on, come on. I want to see my girl tonight. Just sit. Well, I don't know, Sergeant. Pile, will you move it? <laughs> well, why did you have to tell him I was a society girl? Well, honey, it never hurts to have a little build-up. Makes you more desirable, you know what I mean? And anyway, this boy you're meeting is from one of them rich southern families. I just don't like lying. 
If your father's a construction worker, you're not exactly in society. Well, okay, but for tonight, just let it be more glamorous. It won't hurt. Now, stop being so nervous, will you? I want you to have a nice time. Sergeant, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or not. Why are you starting up again? What's with you? You never been out with a girl before? Well, not with a society girl. I just know I'm going to feel out of place. What do I know about society? Why will it's... you knock it off? Now, you've been whining and complaining ever since I brought up this date. I'm warning you, if you don't quit, I'm... Hiya, baby. Hi. Hey, I just got four words to say. Va 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 voom. You're all class, then. Bunny, I'd like you to meet my friend Gomer Pyle. Hey, Miss Bunny. Hi, come on in. <laughs> well, this is my friend Eileen Carson. Eileen, this is Vince Carter and Gomer Pyle. Hi. Hello. Hey, Miss Eileen. Well, let's all sit down, shall we? Right over this way, Gomer. Oh, that is your name, isn't it, Gomer? I got it right, didn't I? Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, good. Well, now, there. That's better. Well, now that we all know each other, uh, how about you and me going out for a little stroll, huh, babe? Well, what's the matter with you? You just walked in through the door. Can't we just take a minute and talk? Talk? Yeah, talk. Oh. Oh. Carson, was that your name? Yes, Eileen Carson. Bunny tells me that you come from a very prominent family. Well, actually, that's right. Her father's very big in the building business. <laughs> Is that a fact? Well, yeah. You know that Kirby building, that uh, 16-story job over on 5th and Main? Well, her father had a lot to do with the building of that, didn't he, Eileen? Well, he... You're from the South, Gomer, are you? Yes, ma'am, that's right. I'm from the South. <laughs> well, uh, what business is your family in? My family? Well... Oil. That's the business Gomer was in back home. Oil. Really? Oil? Yes, ma'am, that and gas. Gas? <laughs> Naturally. Oil and gas go together. Gas comes from oil. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, well, that must be a fascinating business. Well, it... Well, he worked the pumps himself. He did? Yes, ma'am. Next to working the pumps, my biggest pleasure was checking the dipsticks. Dipsticks? Yeah, that shows the oil level. It's technical. Honey, there's more to this oil game than you and I'll ever know. But it's a wonderful business, though, and it's still there waiting for him if he ever wants to go back. <laughs> Well, now that we really know all about each other, how about you and me going well, out? You relax, Vince. I haven't even asked him if they wanted anything. Well, how about you, Gomer? Would you like something? I'll have a lemonade if you please. Well, all righty, lemonade. How about you, Eileen? Oh, me too. Well, fine. Coming right up. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Baby, I thought that maybe you and me oil, could... Oil, huh? So he's an oil. And he's a very nice fella, too. Well, would I bring anyone who wasn't, huh? Yeah. Look, baby, after we finish our drink, how about you and me going for a little walk? I'm dying to be alone with you. But don't be silly. I can't leave Eileen alone. Well, she's not alone. She's with Gomer. Well, it's not polite. This is a double date, and we should stick together. Well, what for? I did like you asked me. I got a friend for your friend. Let her have her own fun. Oh, baby, we got lots to talk about. Vincent, will you please? I gotta fix the drinks. But, baby... Open this. <laughs> sure nice place, Miss Bunny here, Thayer. Yes, it is. And she seems like a real fine person, too. Oh, she is. <laughs> Your friend seems very nice also. Sergeant Carter? Oh, yeah, he's a real wonderful human being. <laughs> Miss Bunny sure seems nice. Oh, she is. It's a real nice place she's got here, too. Yes, it is. Here we are, kids. <laughs> Lemonade. There you are, Gomer. Eileen. Looks real refreshing. Thank you kindly, ma'am. Hey, it's such a beautiful night. How about you and me sitting outside, huh, sugar? Well, Vince, we Come can't on. just... Come uh, on. It'll be nice. Well, Gomer 
Well, I mean, don't want us just to run off. I know what. Let's all go out on the porch and see it. No. I mean, uh, I'm sure you and Eileen have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Come on, honey. <laughs> Sure it's a nice place Miss Bunny has here. Well, I don't like walking out on her that way. It isn't nice. Oh, believe me, she'll be fine. Stop worrying about them and concentrate on us. Honey, it's been a full month since I've seen you, and I've had you on my mind. Excuse me, Sergeant. <laughs> Miss Bunny, uh, how did you turn on the television? It don't seem to come on. Uh, you have to turn on the wall switch. Oh, thank you. The wall switch. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Let's see, where were we? Uh, I remember. They're not having a good time. Huh? If they were having a good time, they wouldn't have turned on the television. This means they have nothing to talk about. Eileen's not having a good time. Would you stop being so nervous? What's the matter with you? Well, I feel responsible for her. She's my guest, and I want her to have a good time. Well, she'll have a good time. Look, turning on the TV sets a good icebreaker. They'll see some show they like, and they'll begin to talk about it. Believe me. Excuse me, Sergeant. Guess what? There's a John Wayne movie on. Don't you want to come in and watch? No. I thought you'd be interested since it's all about the Marines, and I just thought that you... Kyle! <laughs> I'm sure you'd be interested since about the Marines. <laughs> you see, uh, they found a movie on TV they like, and they're happy. Everybody's happy. I'm hungry. You're hungry? Right now, this minute? Well, I'm hungry, and I bet Eileen is, too. Well, you know what we had for lunch today? A salad, just a salad. Okay, okay. Why don't you whip up some knockwurst and beans like you did the last time I was here? What? That won't take... I thought we were going out. Out? Out, yeah, out to a restaurant. I know they'll want to go someplace nice. Let's take him to the Starbright Roof. The Starbright Roof? Well, yeah, Gomer and Eileen are used to the best. We can't just take him to a hash house. The Starbright Roof. <laughs> come on, let's go tell him. Oh, come on, honey. Vince and I have got a great idea. We're going to go to dinner tonight at the Starbright Roof at the Drake Hotel. Come on, let's get our things. The Starbright Roof? That's the most expensive place in town. I know, I know. Well, how did an idea like that ever come up anyway? Don't ask me. All I know is I wanted to go out with my girl tonight, alone. Just the two of us for a nice, quiet evening. And it's turning into a nightmare. <laughs> right now, I wish I was on that beach with John Wayne. <laughs> Look, Charlie, if you think I gave you that fan just uh, for... We are in luck. A table just became a Philip. I figured it would. All right, come on. You wanted a table? Some nice business that feller's got. Five dollars just for shaking hands. Kyle, will you pipe down? And if you get up to dance, for Pete's sake, don't dance country. Remember, that's a society girl you're with. Why, did you see that view, Eileen? Is that something? Oh, it's beautiful. Would you care for cocktails before dinner? Oh, well, I'd like to have... Look, a... as a matter of fact, we're all very hungry and we don't have a lot of time, so could we see the menu? Very well, monsieur. What do you mean, we don't have a lot of time? What's the rush? Well, we don't want to spend the whole evening in a restaurant, do we? I mean, we do want a little time to visit, don't we? Oh, relax, relax. First, we're going to eat. Oh, Eileen, isn't this a nice place? Oh, yes, very. You know, Eileen goes to these kinds of places all the time. How much do you generally have to pay to sit down? Uh, well, what he means is... Oh, Monsieur. thanks. May I suggest some pâté de foie gras to start off with? Or perhaps some of our cheese tidbits au beurre noir? Or caviar? Oh, gee, that's... Uh, look, why don't we skip all that beginning stuff and dive right into the main course, huh? <laughs> Good idea. All them appetizers and things can blow you. <laughs> then may I suggest the filet de boeuf à la Girondine? It's excellent tonight. Good, good. That bouffala, whatever you said, all around. <laughs> <laughs> Has 
just checking the menu for the prices. Golly. Yeah, well, it's uh, a very good restaurant. And it costs us $5 just to say it. Did you know that? It cost us $5 just to say it down. <laughs> This is your big oil man? Well, do you know what they say? The bigger they are, the cheaper they are. Now you know how he hangs on to it. Look, why don't we get out of here? We ain't had a minute alone, you and me. We're alone. Alone? This is alone? I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. Besides, I don't think Eileen's enjoying herself. She looks bored. Huh? You see? She looks bored. Come on, let's blow. Well, maybe you're right. Yeah, we can go home and you and me can have that minute alone together. Come on. <laughs> Come on, we're going. We are? Yeah. Here, uh, you drive. Me? You mean you want me to drive your car, but sorry? Drive, drive. <laughs> Listen, let's stay out here in the car and let them go on in. Well, Vince, we can't do that. A minute, a minute. Can I have a minute alone with you? Are you coming out, Sergeant? No, no, close the door, close the door. <laughs> uh, Pyle, listen, Bunny and I are going to stay out here in the car for a while. Why don't you and Eileen go on in the house and make yourselves at home? Well, heck sake, we'll sit out here with you if you like. No, no, we can't, we can't, we can't have the house. Okay, Sergeant. Vince, we really should go in with them. Why? Why? Why can't I have a minute alone with you? A minute alone. Just you and me alone. Just you and me together alone. Okay. We're alone. Good. <laughs> can't find nothing on the television. Oh, that's okay. I didn't really want to watch anyway. I'm sorry I haven't been more fun tonight. Well, I hadn't been much fun myself. I guess I just ain't used to a girl like you. A girl like me? You know, being in society and all. I'll tell you the honest truth. I never have been out with a society girl before. Really? I think a man like you went out with a lot of society girls. Oh, no, you don't get a chance to meet many society girls working in the filling station the way I did. And since I've been in the Marine Corps, well, I just had... Filling station? Uh-huh, back home where I worked. You worked in a filling station? That's right. Is that what you meant by working the pumps? Well, yeah, what you think I meant? Well, I thought you were an oil millionaire. An oil millionaire? <laughs> That's a good one. Where'd you ever get an idea like that? Well, you know, when we first met and Bunny was saying, Gomer, I'm not a society girl. You ain't. No, Bunny just made that up. Well, why would she do a thing like that? She thought it'd make a better impression. Oh, isn't this embarrassing? <laughs> it sure is. Hey, you know what? I bet Sergeant Carter let you all think I was a big oil man just to make an impression, too. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gomer, I'm so glad neither of us has any money. Yeah, ain't we lucky? <laughs> Come on. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Sergeant Carter for trying to make out I was a big oil man. And shame on you, Miss Bunny, for trying to make out Eileen was a society girl. Wait a minute. You mean you're not? And you are not? Bunny, you lied to me. I lied, I lied. Well, you started at first with that fancy story about that rich Southern family. I lied. Well, that stuff about her and his society, that was pretty good too, kid. Well, if you hadn't lied about him, I wouldn't have lied about her. Well, what's that got to do with well, it? Well, play, Big Mouth. Who are you calling Big Mouth? Sergeant, Sergeant. I can tell you and Miss Bunny would rather be alone, so we just leave you alone. <laughs> Oh, let's go home. 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 Let's go home.
let's call it a draw. What do you say? Huh? Come on. Well, you know what we should do? We should apologize to Eileen and Gomer. That's what we should do. Well, uh, we'll apologize when they get back, baby. They go on for a walk, and when they get back, we'll apologize. Come on now, let's sit down. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Finally. Sergeant Carter, it's almost 12 o'clock. We gotta get back to the base. I happened to notice the time while we was out walking, and I rushed all this way back to tell you. So it's 12 o'clock. What I care. You want to go back to the base? Go back. Me? I want to stay here. Now get out of here. Turn out those lights on the way out. Twelve o'clock? I didn't know it was that late. Well, I gotta get some sleep. Good night, Vince, and thanks for a very lovely evening. <laughs> Did you have a nice time, honey? I'll kill him. If you'll help me when I get back to the base, I'll kill him. <laughs> MC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. for the July firecrackers you heard. Maybe I can help. I used to work in a filling station back home. Well, thanks. I think the old girl just about had it. She's been giving us trouble all along the line. It's been every cent we had on it. Since I'm here, might as well have a look. Can't hurt nothing. Well, what do they think of next? Shazam! You sure got a mess of trouble in there. How far did you drive with it like that? Well, wasn't easy, but we made it all the way from North Carolina. North Carolina? Hey, that's where I'm from. It's a little bitty town called Mayberry, about 40 miles from Raleigh. Did you ever hear of it? Oh, sure. You did? Of course, everybody heard of Raleigh. It's state capital. <laughs> no, I meant Mayberry. Oh, Mayberry. Did you ever hear of it? No, never heard of it. Well, where are you from? Old little town south part of the state called Duncan's Pond. Duncan's Pond. Don't worry. Nobody ever heard of it. You know, that's the trouble. Heard there was real opportunity out west, so I figured maybe start fresh, you know, at up and coming town in Oregon. It's supposed to be real nice. Well, it's real nice here in California, too. Hey, I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Gomer Pyle. Oh, Harper Caldwell. Uh, Lottie, I want you to meet my family. Uh, 
This is my wife, Lottie, and uh, How do you? this is our daughter, Laura May, and this is Judd. Hi, Hi. Judd. Well, Mother, it looks like we may have to settle in California. Sure would be a shame to come this far and not be able to make it all the way to Oregon. Well, I thought the jalopy would make it up to there. That's all we wanted was just to make it up to there. Well, I think I can fix it temporary for you. If you'll stay over tonight, I'll try and fix it up permanent for you tomorrow. What well, do you think you can? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think I can fix it permanent enough for you to get all the way to Oregon. But like I said, if you'll stay overnight, I'll sure try. Oh, we'd, we'd sure appreciate that, Gomer. I guess we'll have to sleep in the truck again tonight, Mother. Sleep in the truck? Well, we don't have much choice. You can't do that. It gets cold out here at night. Much too cold for the kids to stay outside. Hey, there's an old supply shack on the base. It's hardly ever used. I don't think anybody would care if you stayed there one night. We were so lucky to meet you, Gomer. Did you hear that, Mother? <laughs> well, like I said, it's just for one night, and now you got to promise not to touch anything. Oh, we promise, Gomer. You hear that, Judd? Well, let me try and fix it up temporary for you here, and we'll be on our way. First of all, I'm going to need something rubbery to make a fan dale. You know, something that'll stretch. <laughs> Your suspenders would work. <laughs> Come on, Susie, see it. See, I told you it's hardly ever used. I don't think anybody will care. Come on. Don't worry, it's gonna be all right. Go on in and make yourselves comfortable, and I'll be back later on. Thanks, Gomer. Yeah, thanks, Gomer. We're, we're obliged. Oh, forget it. You're sure it's all right? I'm sure. I'll see you after a while. Maneuvers are very important. Get that straight. Very important. So I want every man on his toes every minute of the day. Now, I don't want to make you nervous, but these maneuvers are going to be completely covered by the press. And that means Golly, that... Sergeant. You mean we might get our picture in the paper? Hi. I'd better get a haircut. Do you think it needs cutting back there? I'll knock it off. I'll make sure they photograph your good side. You just make sure you do what you're supposed to. Right, Sergeant. Now, remember... With all these people from the press here, it's going to be just like having the eyes of the whole country on us. I think you could use a little trim, R.D. Knock it off! <laughs> Pile, and this goes for all of you, but especially you, if there's one foul-up tomorrow, just one foul-up, well, take my word for it, there better not be. <laughs> Any questions? What, Pile? Since you said newspapers was gonna be here, I just wondered if you knew if a fella from the Mayberry Gazette was gonna be here. Let's get that rear area police stuff. Mo, 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 mo! Gomer! Hey! Gomer! Harper, I told you to wait in the supply shack till I got there. Well, I couldn't. That officer fella come and threw us out. Oh, my. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, you wait for me over at the bus stop, and I'll be by later on. And don't worry, I'll think of something. You'll all be real safe in here, honest. I like that place that threw us out of better. You'd be surprised how much room there is inside here. You'll all fit just fine. Come on, I'll show you. Where's the door? Well, it ain't got a door. You have to go in through the turret. Oh. See how easy it is? Let me have them one at a time. Here we go. Boy. Yeah. Thanks, go 
Homer. We're obliged. You just make yourselves at home, and I'll be back just as soon as I can. Now, you're sure it's all right? I'm sure. <laughs> Good news. Some news, huh? No passes tonight. You like that? But, Duke, we got maneuvers tomorrow. So what, Gomer? That's tomorrow. You could do with a good night's sleep. You're starting to get them dark circles under your eyes again. But I sure had a lot of fun getting them, pal. <laughs> hey, I heard the platoon that does best in war maneuvers gets a week's liberty. Shazam! I was hoping that'd happen. A week's liberty. That's from the movie Fat Chance. <laughs> well, that's what I heard. Well, where'd you hear it? Larry told me. Is that right, Larry? I guess so. Bert told me. Who told you, Bert? Eddie. Is that true, Eddie? I don't know. Marty told me. Where'd you hear it, Marty? Charlie told me. Is that on the level, Charlie? I guess so. Gomer told me. Who told you, Gomer? Nobody. I just did it because I was hoping it'd happen. <laughs> Gomer. Mr. Harper, you ought not be here. Oh, I'm sorry, Gomer, but that officer fella come back and threw us out again. I've been looking all over the place for you. You high up? Well, I've got to be honest with you. Gomer, the other folks around here ain't friendly like you are. Some of them are just downright unfriendly. All right, let's have your attention for a minute. Come on, let's listen up. That's one of the unfriendly ones I was telling you about. <laughs> that includes you too, Pyle. Won't you join us? Sure, Sergeant. Okay, now here's how we're shaping up for tomorrow. These are the special assignments. Felcher and Perkins, you're on the walkie-talkie. Dooley and Perry, you're on the mortar. Slater and Pyle, you're on the bazooka. Me, Sergeant? On the bazooka? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, at least all those years of possum hunting made you useful for something. At least you got a good aim. Just make sure it's perfect tomorrow. Oh, well, I can work that bazooka sight real good. First, you just look through that little gear snow, and then you turn... Just do it. Do it. And one knucklehead move tomorrow, and your name is Mud with me. And that goes for all of you. Now, sack out early, and be on your toes tomorrow. Oh, uh, by the way, if you give it all you got tomorrow, you'll be doing yourselves a big favor. I just heard from someone who heard it from a very reliable source that the best platoon is going to get a week's liberty. <laughs> Mr. Harper? Golly, I feel just terrible about you being chased out like that. I don't mind about myself, but the kids are getting a little tired and cranky. Oh, bless their hearts. Them poor little youngins. I just got to get them a roof over our heads. There ought to be some place. I'll be right out. I think I know a place. Anybody go off and leave a place like this? Looks like they couldn't take everything with them. But like I said, it's just an abandoned shack saw. Gee, Gomer, this is the nicest place we've had yet. It sure is. Hey, Pug, can I sleep up here, please? Sure, son. Lottie, look at that, please. We got chairs. We got a table. We got a fireplace. Beds. Oh, this is a real home. Oh, thank you, Gomer. I can't tell you how much we appreciate this. Gomer, you really done us a good turn, a, a real good turn. We won't forget it. Oh, what, nothing? Now I can just fix your truck. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you might have to stay here a couple of days. That's just fine. See, I got war maneuvers tomorrow, so I probably won't have a chance to try to fix your truck till the next day. Well, what's one more day? I just hope nobody comes and tries to throw us out of here. Oh, don't worry. I should have thought of this place right off. Nobody will bother you here. Gomer, we were so lucky to meet up with you. If you hadn't, we'd have sure been in a mess of trouble. Well, I'll see you tomorrow right after wall maneuvers. You all get a good night's sleep. I'm sure we'll sleep real good tonight, Gomer. And I'll sleep a whole lot better, too, now, knowing you're safe. Oh, Gomer. Huh? 
Now you're sure this time it's really all right. I'm sure. Well, I'll see you. sleeping in the truck. Oh, I think our luck's beginning to change. Meeting Gomer was a sign. I can feel it in my bones. Ain't he a fine boy? You know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have no roof over our heads. Golly, it sure is pretty. Oh. And so peaceful and quiet. What do you think, Harper? Do you think Oregon will be as nice? Well, I don't know. Sure be mighty hard to beat that view. You nervous, Gomer? Why should it be nervous? Well, with the big brass and the reporters out there and you firing a bazooka, doesn't that make you nervous? Shoot sight and see if All you gotta do is look through this little gizmo and turn this thingamajig here and then you Gomer, take... don't use all that technical language on me. <laughs> Standing by and ready for action, sir. As you were, Sergeant. Well, gentlemen, the next demonstration you are about to see is of an entirely different nature. The assault and destruction of an enemy communications outpost. The target is that shack down there in the valley. Our objective to destroy it swiftly and completely. And we can do it with a platoon equipped with only a bazooka and small arms. You may commence the attack, Sergeant. Aye, sir. Hey, Sergeant, I bet I know what you're gonna say. You gonna tell me to start sighting the target. I just love it when you tell me to start sighting the target. Well, you wait till I give you the order. Right. I won't do a thing till you tell me to start sighting the target. You are gonna tell me to sight the target, ain't you? Well, when I'm good and ready, I'll tell you. Right. All right, sight the target. See, I knew you was gonna tell me to sight the target. Sight it, sight it. Get on that shack over there. Are you on target, Bob? Huh? Are you on target? What are you waiting for? Uh, uh, Sergeant, don't you think it'd be better if we went down there and captured the target by infiltration, huh, don't you? Have you lost your mind? Well, it... We'd save the taxpayers a whole lot of money, and then he's we would be... cracking up. Right here in front of my eyes, he's cracking up. Anytime you're ready, Sergeant. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How have you got that target sighted? Well, just let me check the range again. Target sighted. It better be. Fire! Better close the window, Harper. Sounds like a thunderstorm. <laughs> I already sight. What's the matter with you? You know how to handle this thing. Well, this ought to be a whole lot closer. It really ought to. Well, fire, fire! Somebody blowed up the truck. Get down on the floor. No, get, get over there. Go on, get over there. Try to get him. Buddy, I don't know who that is out there, but we ain't going down without fight. <laughs> That's what I call realism. You know, for a minute there, I was really scared. Sergeant Carter. 
Yes, sir. What's going on? Who's in that shack? Well, I don't know, sir. Well, we're being fired upon, Sergeant. Did you know that? Oh, yes, sir. Well, who's doing the firing? Well, uh, well, uh, somebody probably barricaded himself in there is what it is, sir. Well, get a detail down there and smoke that someone out with tear gas. Uh, aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Golly, maybe there's some kids in there playing, sir. If those are kids playing, I don't like their toys. A detail of men with tear gas, Sergeant. Whoever's in there, just get them out. Aye, aye, sir. Sir, sir. What is it? I know it's not my place to offer suggestions, but I'd go down there alone if the Colonel will let me. That doesn't make much sense, Private. Why send one man? Whoever's in there is obviously armed and not afraid to fire and doesn't care what or who he hits. Well, that's what I mean, sir. We had something like this back home once. A feller got all barricaded in, and then every time a bunch would rush him, he got so scared and panicky that he just fired right into the whole pack of them. And then just one feller tried, and he made it, because when the feller seen just one coming, he didn't get scared. The feller went in there and took that gun away from him and bawled him out good, he did. Please, sir, let me. Well, that's very courageous of you, Private. All right, but be careful. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Classes, Sergeant. Yes, sir. No more shooting, Harper, please. Well, not unless I have to, Lottie. But I got a right. A man's home's his castle. <laughs> shooting at us, Gomer. Just take a look at what they've done to our truck. Whenever we're in trouble, we can always count on you to be around, can't we, Gomer? Sure can, ma'am. Wait a minute. I think I see something moving. You can't do that, Harper. Well, why not? Somebody out there is firing at me. Who do you think that is firing at us, Gomer? Well, I know who it is. It's the United States Marine Corps. The Marines? Uh-huh. Well, you see, it's all my fault. This here shack is right smack in the middle of the field for the war maneuvers. What's he doing in there? I wish I knew, sir. All he has to say is this is government property, so you'll have to get out of this shack. Well, that's probably just what he's saying, sir. And why is it taking so long? Well, uh... Well, if the colonel's noticed, he does speak kind of slow. <laughs> well, you see, this is government property. That's the reason you're gonna have to get out of the shack. I sure am sorry. Well, it ain't your fault, Gomer. You tried. You couldn't help with it of all the places you picked out for us to stay. Not one of them worked out. <laughs> sure botched things up. Don't feel bad, Gomer. You were only trying to do good. I'm sure sorry about it, ma'am. Well, you tell your colonel that we get out. We'll, we'll leave. We don't stay where we're not wanted. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Harper. And you can also tell him we ain't got no truck no more. It's all busted out. They busted it for us. I know. I sure am sorry about that, too. Well, it may take a little while for us to get out. You see, we're a family. We're not Marines. We... Right. I don't know how we're going to get to Oregon now with the truck blowed up. I sure am sorry. You just take as much time as you need. Guess we'll just have to wait. Oh, we'll see you, Gomer. Took Okinawa in less time than this. <laughs> Wait a minute, he's coming out. Yes, sir. How many's he got with him? He's alone. Alone? Well, whoever's in there isn't budging. You gonna smoke him out, Colonel? I certainly am. I've got a program to carry out. Well, who is it? Who's down there? Well, it's a whole family. A mama and a daddy and a little girl and a little boy. A whole family? Well, how did they get in there anyway? Just decided to move in? Well... And now they won't leave? That's what they told you? Well, you see, their truck's busted, sir. 
We've got maneuvers to complete. You gonna use tear gas, Colonel? What? Wouldn't have to use anything if they had a truck. See, they need a truck. Their own truck got run. They need a truck. Truck could do it. Best plan would be if they had a truck. See, they really need a truck. Where do they want to go, anyway? They want to go to Oregon, and they could if they had a truck. You see, if they had a truck... I know, they... I know. <laughs> All right. Let's loan them one of our trucks and get them to Oregon. You lend them a truck, Colonel? Well, of course. Can't just let them sit down there. That's mighty generous of you, Colonel. Hey, make a great human interest story. And a big credit to you, sir. And, sir, for the folks down there, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I guess that's about it. it uh... Now, don't forget, buddy boy. Anytime you're in Oregon, you've got a place to hang your hat. Well, thank you, Harper. That's real nice. Bye-bye. I'll be sweet. Bye, be careful now. Bye, Gomer. What am I gonna do? Well, let's see. I've got tomorrow off, and I can go in town and get you a brand new car. But first of all, I gotta get you a place to stay tonight. <laughs> Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. in it. You don't see your own reflection in it? Don't look at the laces, though. It might creases in your face. <laughs> all right, all of you people. All of you over here. Drop whatever you're doing and listen up good. Now, I need a volunteer for a special detail. Headquarters has decided to add something new to battalion operations. They're requisitioning some dogs from the Army Canine Corps to be used on sentry duty. Now, these dogs are going to be shipped dogs. in here. Dogs? You mean we're gonna have dogs right here on the base? I said, listen, don't talk. Right, Sergeant. Dogs, how about five? Pile! Now, there are gonna be four dogs in all, so we'll need four men to team up with them. Each platoon sergeant has been asked to pick a man from his own outfit, which is why I'm here. Well, anybody interested? I am, Sergeant, I am. 
Well, any volunteers? I am, Sarge, and I'll be a volunteer. Well, how about it? Uh, Johnson? Sounds like a job right up my alley, Sergeant. Okay, that's one. Is there another one? Me, Sarge, now I'm another one. Please? Please? All right. It's between Pyle and Johnson. The rest of you people, as you were. Have you had much experience with dogs? Oh, yes, yeah, Sergeant. I can't remember a time in my life when I didn't have a dog. I've had 25 in all. Let's see, there was Nellie and Pepper and Gilmore and Choo Chin. Okay, Pyle. Choo Chin was a child. Swell. Not... Then there was Champ. He was one of the first dogs I ever had. Talk about good natured. Why, well, he wouldn't even scratch for fear of hurting the fleas. That's very interesting. Then there was Pyle. He was one of the finest retrievers that ever was. Oh, it was a thing of beauty to see him jump into an icy creek and swim across and fetch a duck. Pretty near broke my heart when he got too old to retrieve. I knew he was just about through, though, one day when he ran up to the creek. He stuck his paw in the water to test the temperature. I think that's one of the saddest things in the world when a good hunting dog is too old to retrieve anymore. Don't you think so, Sergeant? Will you knock it off? <laughs> How about you, Johnson? You had much experience with dogs? Sure have, Sergeant. But I didn't have them just as house pets. I was a mule skinner, and I had them kind of rough dogs they have in this canine corps. Knew how to handle them, too. When they acted up, I gave it to them good. You mean you whooped them? Well, let's just say I had my ways. But when I gave them an order, those monsters listened. Well, I never considered any dog I ever had a monster. Each one was a fine animal, and I'd give him his due respect. Why, well, I never would in the... What is this, a dog debate? Now, look, Johnson, they're looking for dog partners, not lion tamers. Can you do the job or can't you? Please, Sergeant, give me the chance. I'll make good. I promise you'll see. Sergeant, I guarantee you I'll handle that dog the way you handle the platoon. Yeah? Yeah, you know, with the old iron fist. Ra, ra, ra. Even when they do it right, you don't let them know. Huh? So they come to look at you as just a big, mean, ugly brute. Well, ordinarily, I wouldn't pick you for anything. It usually ends in disaster. But I got a feeling that you're right for this job. It's just a feeling. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, you wouldn't exactly be a big, mean, ugly brute, would you? Why, I never would. Sergeant, I've got a lot more experience with these kind of dogs. Johnson, who's doing the picking? You or the brute? <laughs> now, they'll be shipping in these dogs tomorrow morning. There'll be an instructor along to conduct the training. Just make sure you listen up good to exactly everything he says and do whatever he tells you. Don't worry, Sergeant, I will. See that you do. Now, I'm sticking my neck out picking you. Don't make me look bad. I won't. And, Sergeant? Yeah? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Huh. Sorry I took the job away from you, Johnson. No hard feelings. Well, let's see what happens when the dogs come. from the trip. Well, I don't blame him. I'd be edgy, too, if I'd come all this way locked in the cage. Hi, Sergeant Carter. Sergeant Myers. These are men who'll be working with the dogs? Right. I'm your training instructor. It'll be my job to teach you to take over the dogs. Do we get to pick out the one we want? Can we do it now? This ain't a pet shop window pile, and you ain't picking out a puppy for your birthday. Now, pipe down and listen. First, I want to get these hounds settled down and used to their new surroundings. Let's meet in about an hour and get started. Right. We'll be there with bells on. See you later, you beautiful thing. I told you not to get too close. These animals have been trained to attack strangers. Don't you understand? We won't be strangers long. I'm gonna be a daddy to one of you. Well, when you get out of here. When you go, go. These animals are already highly trained, qualified sentry dogs. Now it's just a matter of them getting used to their new partners. From now on, you and the dog you've selected will become inseparable. Only you will pet, feed, or otherwise handle your dogs. 
Now, these dogs have names which you will continue to use. This is Ripper. This is Mauler. This is Tiger. And this is Killer. Mean names. Awful mean. Now, it's going to take a little time for your dog to get used to you and become your friend. To break the ice, I want each of you to move over to your dog real easy-like and stand beside him. Don't do anything else. Just stand. There ain't no reason to be frightened. I'm just trying to get acquainted. Now, slowly, real slowly, reach over and pet your dog. Don't do anything to startle him. That's okay. Don't let it throw you. Killer happens to be the toughest one in the bunch. It may take a little longer with him. Well, that name of his ain't helping none. Every time you call him Killer, it only reminds him to stay mean. Kyle, you might be glad someday he is mean. He might save your life against a saboteur or something. Okay, now try petting him again. Nice and easy, life. Lord, if he's this way with his master, I'd hate to think what he'd do to that saboteur. <laughs> Say it. Say it. Say it. Pull on the leash harder. Force him down. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Sit. He sure minds you a whole lot better than he does me. Don't worry. He'll get used to you. He's a cracked dog. He'll start obeying you real fast. Okay. Forward. March. <laughs> <laughs> Faller, Faller, come on, Faller, come on, Faller. Heel. You're trying to embarrass me in front of everybody. You're doing a good job. First man. Next man. Next. Next. <laughs> Yank on the leash to get him started. Come on. Come on, killer. Come on, killer. Killer, come on. Paul is sure having his troubles, huh, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah. If it was me, I'd have had that hound buckled down within five minutes. Who asked you? It's just the first day. Right, Sergeant. Detail? Halt! Okay, we'll hit it again tomorrow. Right now, get your dog in his cage and get him fed. Dismissed! Come on, killer, get in. Sergeant, it's just gonna take a little time. Well, there ain't gonna be too much time. There's a lieutenant from the Canine Corps coming at the end of the week to check you guys out. Now, if you don't think you're gonna be ready, say so right now, and I'll get Johnson to take over. Johnson? Well, please don't do that, Sergeant. He'd be mean to my dog. Pile, that might be the only way to handle this hound. Don't worry. Me and him's gonna get along just fine. I ain't weak. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get to him, I promise. Just give me a little more time, Sergeant. Well, not too much more, because if there's no improvement, I'm gonna make the switch. I'm the one that's responsible, and I ain't staying out on that limb much longer. It'll be all right, Sergeant. I just know it will. <laughs> Did you hear that? If you don't start cooperating pretty soon, you're gonna end up with Buck Johnson as your partner. <laughs> You know, I ought to be mad at you for the way you behaved today, but I ain't. I forgive you. I know it was just your first day and you was kind of upset. <laughs> that 
That's it. That's it. Get it all out of your system. If there's something eating at you, there ain't nothing worse than keeping it inside. I know, I know. You're in a strange place, and you're tired, and you're hungry. Well, I'll go get you dinner. Then we'll have us a long talk and really get acquainted. How about that? <laughs> when a boy tries to do a man's job. I huh? tell you, the only way to handle these monsters is to... Yeah, I know. Be a mean, ugly brute. Look, you don't want to watch this. Just watch. Keep your mouth shut. Come on. Come on. Jump. Come on, please. Jump. Come on, killer. You ready, Corporal? What we're about to do now is the most important exercise of all. It's a test of the dog's aggressiveness if he's provoked by an enemy. All right, we'll try yours first. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. Fine, fine. Okay, pile, you next. <laughs> your turn. Get him out of there. Come on, killer. All right, get him down. Get him down, pile. My goodness. You're attacking that food like he was the enemy. When you're off duty, you've got to learn to relax a little. You've got to forget this killing, killing, killing all the time and learn to enjoy life. It's no good if you have nothing in your heart but hatred. You've got to learn to love a little, too. My goodness, your muscles are as tight as guitar strings. Ease up, stretch out a little. That's better. You see, underneath it all, I know you got nice qualities. The whole trouble is that, that name they gave you, Killer. You figure you just got to live up to it. If you had a different name, maybe you'd act different. In fact, why don't we call you by something else when you're off duty? Let's see. Now, what could we call you instead of killer? How about Vimney Gilbert? I used to have a collie by that name, and he was as gentle as he could be. Vimney Gilbert. How's that hit you? Hey, Vimney Gilbert. Well, uh, do you think you're going to be able to... start? I think I'm getting Vimney Gilbert to go to sleep. Vimney who? Vimney Gilbert. That's what I call killer when he's off duty. Emily Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Try to make as good a showing as we can at the inspection. That's all for now. Dismiss. Go oh, pile. Well, you're doing much better. Thank you, Sergeant. I told you all I needed was a little time to get squared away. Yeah, well, keep it up, huh? Then you're not gonna let Johnson take my dog? What for? You're doing all right. Well, thank you a lot, Sergeant, for having faith in me. I won't let you down. Now, if you'll excuse me, it's time for us brushing. Limley really looks forward to that. Limley. Gilbert. Come on, boy. Feels good, don't it? Tell the truth now. Don't you feel a whole lot better since you've learned to relax? You can defend your country and still have a happy life at the 
same time. <laughs> smile, Indy Gilbert, smile. I don't like dogs licking my face. That's the only way they can show affection. They can't shake hands like human beings, so they do it with licking. Well, how come he's so affectionate in the first place? I thought these hounds were supposed to be suspicious of strangers. Well, you're no stranger, for heaven's sake. He's seen you around, and he likes you. He's just one of them great dogs that's blessed with a good nature. This ain't the way he was when he first came here. He was one of the roughest dogs in the bunch. Oh, he still is when he's on duty. But when he's off duty, he likes to relax and have fun just like the rest of us. Well, just make sure he don't get too relaxed. I'm counting on you to make a good showing in that inspection. Oh, don't you worry about this feller, Sergeant. Just between you and me, he's the best dog of the bunch. Maybe I'm prejudiced him being mine now, but that's the way I feel. You're the best darn dog in the whole world, and Gomer loves you. <laughs> well, I'll see you later, Sergeant. I got to go give him a bath. He's not only going to be the best dog in that inspection, but he's going to be the sweetie smelling. <laughs> Come on, honey. Let's go rub a dab in the tub. <laughs> Come on. some fine dogs there. Thank you, sir. Now, this is the real test of their ability, sir. A demonstration of their alertness and aggressiveness when confronted by an enemy. <laughs> you see what you mean? Good. Good. Watch this one, sir. This is Killer, one of the best we have. Get up, get up, man. You're on duty. Get up, no, no, get up, get up. You're on duty now. You ain't off duty. No, no, you can't do that now. I can't do your tum tum now. The colonel and everybody's watching. Get up. Attack, attack. Killer, get up. Sergeant Myers, just what is going on here? I don't know, sir. Who was in charge of that dog? This man, sir. Private, what have you done to that dog? Nothing, sir. Nothing, huh? I'll tell you what you've done, boy. You have taken a powerful, aggressive animal and turned him into a pussycat. <laughs> this dog was a perfect specimen when he came here. He was trained to defend and attack. Look at him now. He's a pussycat. <laughs> Slobbering hound off of me. You have ruined him, that's what you've done. Ruined him. He is washed up as a sentry dog. You understand that, Sergeant? Shall we take him to the kennels for retraining, sir? Retraining? What for? He's finished. The only thing he's good for now is the dog pound. Get him out of here. Yes, sir. Dog pound? You mean you're going to send him to the dog pound? That's right, Private. Well, I don't mean to be disrespectful, sir, but you'd be making a terrible mistake to send this animal to the pound. He's a fine dog. I don't care what you say. A dog don't have to be a vicious beast every minute he's in the canine corpse. Excuse me, sir, with your permission. Well, that happens to be an officer you're talking to, you knucklehead. Didn't you learn the first thing about military courtesy, or you want to go to the brig and learn some more? Well, didn't you, huh? Didn't you? <laughs> Hold him! Hold that dog! Oh, come back! Come back now! Stop by it! Do you agree now, Private, that the only place for this dog is the pound? It's very obvious you have lost complete control of this animal. I wouldn't say that, Lieutenant. I'd say the dog handles himself quite well. Sir? The minute he sensed his master being threatened, he jumped to his defense. That's what he's trained to do, isn't it? That's right, sir, but the dog is unfit for sentry duty. He failed to respond when he himself was being attacked. 
sir. The dog is unfit. That may be so, but isn't it lucky you discovered it now, rather than later doing some crucial test? Sir? Well, if the dog is a pussycat, as you said, he probably had within him the makings of a pussycat all along. The private here only managed to bring that out. But, sir... I think you should be thankful to the private for uncovering it now, rather than having the enemy do it later. Well, yes, sir, but... I don't feel the only thing left for this dog is the pound. If you don't want him, I know someone who does, Colonel Swanson. He has a youngster who'd probably appreciate a fine companion like this. He might enjoy this pussycat. Yes, sir. That's wonderful, sir. Did you hear that, boy? You ain't gonna go to no pound after all. You're gonna be in a fine home, a colonel's home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, sir, do you think it'd be all right if I come over and visit the dog every once in a while? I suppose so. Wonderful, sweetie. I'm gonna get to come and visit you and we can play all of our favorite games. Hide and seek and fetch the stick and run, sheep, run. And every now and then they're gonna let you brush you and I can do your tum-tum. He just loves it when I do his tum-tum. Don't you leave him the guilt? I think I'm gonna be sick. I already am. <laughs> MC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Now don't gobble it, surprise Team Rear. Ain't nobody gonna take it away from you. Just keep it nice and easy. And don't slur. Gomer! Gomer, I thought you got rid of that cat. Oh, I guess she likes me. You mean she likes that chow you've been feeding her? Well, that too, I suppose. I wish I could find her some fish heads. The cook says we only get frozen fish here and they don't freeze the heads. <laughs> well, I'll rustle up something else to find later on. Gomer, you're really asking for trouble. You know you're not supposed to have any pets on the base. What's the matter with you? A cat he's got. Gomer, what is it about you that brings every stray animal to your doorstep? I don't know. I just kind of take to them, and they kind of take to me. I like all living things. Anyway, she reminds me of Henrietta, my cat back home. That's the reason I call her Henrietta, on account she reminds me of her. You'd have loved Henrietta. <laughs> Clean. Why, she was the cleanest cat you and Ellie ever saw. Well... Oh, hey, Sergeant. Well, did I or did I not tell you to get rid of that cat? Well, you did, but... This but... is a Marine base, not a home for lost animals. Well, I tried to get rid of her, honest, but she just keeps coming back. She just keeps coming back to me. That's very touching. I'm really sorry, Sergeant, but I'll try... And to never mind, rid... Pyle. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to get rid of the cat. The cat is going to get rid of you. I beg your pardon? You're going on a little trip, is what? Now, all of you, listen up. You're all going on a trip. We just got orders to move out. We're boarding ship for three weeks of maneuvers. You really mean it, Sergeant? We're going to go aboard a for real Navy ship? No, it's a good ship lollipop. <laughs> now, all of you, I want you to get all your gear together. We're moving out tomorrow at 1900. That means Marines only. 
no cats. Is that clear, Pyle? Right, Sergeant. Well, I guess this looks like the end of the line for us, Henrietta. That's all part of being a Marine. When duty calls, you just got to leave your loved ones behind. Okay, you finished your milk, so now's as good a time as any for you to be on your way. Okay, now. Go on. Scoop. Go on now. Don't look back. That's the worst thing you can do. Just look straight ahead and keep going. Now, Scoop. That's a good girl. Just keep walking. If I was you, I'd hook up with a civilian. They lead a lot more settled life. <laughs> You say goodbye to your whiskey friend? My what? The cat, the cat. Oh, you mean Henrietta. Oh, yeah, I expect she's back in town by now. See what Is I've she done? gone? Yes, sir. Good. Now move it. All right, let's straighten up that formation. Look alive in there. Come on, buckle up that chin strap. You too. Come on, move, move, move. All right, pull out. Get ready to load up. You better get that cat out of here before she follows you on the truck. That's all Sergeant Carter needs. Come on. It ain't gonna do you any good to hang around here. I can't take you with me. Now go on and scoop. Now, you don't want to get me in trouble with the sergeant, do you? Please, Henrietta, go on. Now, stop that. It ain't gonna do you any good. You can cuddle all you want to, but I just can't. Something. Let me try and guess. You're ahead? <laughs> no, it's just a... Are we keeping you away from something important? No, it's just... I wouldn't want to drag you away from anything. Well, that's real considerate of you, Sergeant, but I was just... Get on that truck! <laughs> <laughs> Just make yourself at home. I hope none of you have claustrophobia. What's claustrophobia? That's when you're afraid of small, closed-in places. Oh, is that what they call it? Yeah, why? What do you call it? I call it being afraid of small, closed-in places. <laughs> why, you got it? No, I like it. I think it makes things cozier. Yes, well... I hope I get the top bunk up there. Be like sleeping in a treehouse back home. Well, just don't walk in your sleep. That first step will be a butte. <laughs> well, Navy, how's the challenge, Tub? The best. You know the Navy. We always go first class. Did you ever serve sardines once in a while? Yeah, sometimes. How about tuna fish? Yeah. And fresh milk. Do you have plenty of fresh milk? Of course we do. Anything you got, we got. Gomer, Gomer, what was all that third degree about just now? Tuna fish, sardines, fresh milk. I know you used to worry about all that when you had a cat to feed, but now you, you don't have a cat to feed. That's right, isn't it, Gomer? You don't have a cat to feed? Gomer, tell me you don't have a cat to feed. Well, darn it all, Duke. I just couldn't leave her behind. I just couldn't. Gomer, Gomer, you gotta be out of your mind. Sorry I had to transport you this way, Henrietta, but it was the only way. Take a deep breath and get some fresh air in your lungs. Gomer, Sergeant Carter is gonna kill you. You know that, don't you? With his bare hands, he's gonna squeeze the life out of you. Well, I ain't too happy about the prospects, but golly, what are you gonna do when a poor innocent critter curls herself around your leg and begs you not to leave her behind? You can give her a good swift kick and tell her to get lost. That's what you can do. <laughs> you don't mean that, Duke. You're a kind person and you don't mean that. All right. 
All right. Just how do you expect to keep a cat hidden aboard a ship for three weeks? Well, I ain't quite got that planned out yet. Oh, peachy. But it shouldn't be too much trouble. It's such a big ship and such a little bitty cat. Quick, get that thing back in the back, Sergeant Carter's coming. Oh, Lordy. Now, not a peep out of you, do you hear? All right, you people, listen up. For the next day or so, we're going to be anchored here in the harbor until the rest of the convoy assembles. But that don't mean we're on holiday. Our work goes on as usual, so let's get settled down. Oh, uh, one more thing. I got a few important words to say, so listen up real good. As sharp as we are on land, we gotta be twice as sharp on board this ship. So let's don't give the Navy any reason to think we're not. During the next three weeks, we're gonna be perfect in every way. Is that clear? Aye, 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 aye. How are we gonna be? Perfect, perfect in every, every way. way. I can hear you. Perfect in every way. Okay. I've had a lot of squads, a lot of platoons on a lot of ships. And I have a perfect record. I don't want this trip to be any different. I don't want to see any... What's that? I heard something. I kind of squeaky. Was that you just now, Pyle? Just now? Yes, sir, that was me. But see, I ain't used to the CR yet. Now, I don't want to see any rules broken. I don't want to see them even slightly bent. There it was again. That wasn't you this time, Pyle. Will you shut up? Get out of my place. Sergeant, there's something I'd like to explain. You're out to get me, aren't you? Well, Sergeant? If you want to destroy me, why don't you do it the quick way? Shoot me, push me overboard, but why this slow torture? Sergeant, you I was actually just... brought a cat aboard ship. You actually did it. But, Sergeant, I was just... Okay, to... Pyle. You did a real bright thing. Now I'm going to do a bright thing. What are you going to do, Sergeant? You want to know what I'm going to do, Pyle? I'm going to take this cat, I'm going up on deck, and I'm going to throw it overboard. But, Sergeant Carter, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Just watch me. But, Sergeant... Now, hear I... this. Now, hear this. All Marines fall in topside. All Marines fall in topside on the double. Okay, you say by the bell this time. But when we get back from up there, this thing goes in the drink. But you can't do that, Sergeant. Pyle, are you telling me what I can and what I can't do? No, sir, but... I then just... secure this cat until we get back. And I mean secure it. I don't want it roaming all over the ship. But, Sergeant... Move it! Move it! Do it! You matter? Think what's the trouble with that in town? And in case any of you last think this is a pleasure cruise, let me straighten you out right here and now. You're here to work. You will be expected to keep your own areas policed. And while on deck, you'll be expected to help police the decks. You will each take your turn in the galley. I'm the senior chief petty officer aboard this ship, and I'm in charge of this group. Obey the rules and regulations, keep your noses clean, and there won't be any trouble. But if one single rule is broken, you'll regret the day you ever stepped aboard this ship. So just keep that in... Wait a minute. What's this? What's this? What's this? Who belongs to this? Well, it's mine, sir. I guess it fell out of my pocket. Well, how did it get into your pocket? Well, I bought it in town, and I, I didn't think there'd be any harm in having a little turtle. Y you see, see, it's just a souvenir, and I, and I thought... A turtle belongs in the ocean. <laughs> Check your men a little more carefully, Sergeant. You know the rules about contraband. There will be no contraband aboard this ship, especially pets of any kind. If I ever find any, they'll be keeping that turtle company. I don't like contraband. Contraband goes overboard. Okay. Now you all know how I feel about contraband. Ten, hut! His hut! Did you see what he did with my turtle? Did you see? Oh, he's a dog. Now, what's so terrible about a little turtle? A turtle! Now, what can a turtle do? You heard him. It's contraband. Poor Henrietta. She's as good as gone right now. If he do that with a little turtle, just think what he'll do with the cat. <laughs> Looks like you ain't gonna get to do what you said you's gonna do, Sergeant. Huh? That there chief petty officer's gonna beat you to it. He's gonna do it for you. Throw Henrietta overboard. Yeah, well, don't be so sure. What do you mean, Sergeant? You heard what he said about contraband. I heard, I heard. I know all about contraband. Nobody has to tell me about contraband. But I got something to say, too, you know. Then you ain't on his side? You won't let him hurt Henrietta? If I don't want him to hurt Henrietta, then he ain't gonna hurt Henrietta. 
Sergeant Carter, you're a wonderful human being to be protecting a cat that way. A wonderful human being. Knock it off, pilot. That has nothing to do with a cat. I'm saying I'll make the decisions about what to do with my contraband. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. You ain't only saving a cat, but you're protecting a mama. Pilot, I told you it had nothing to do with... A mama? Uh-huh. Henrietta's gonna have kittens. No. Gomer, you're kidding. Well, I wouldn't kid about a thing like that. That's the reason I didn't have the heart to leave her behind. I couldn't leave her alone in that condition. Well, why didn't you say something for crying out loud? Why keep it a secret? Well, I knew how you felt about having one cat around. I was afraid to tell you that there might be six more. Six? <laughs> Impossible. Ain't it exciting? Henrietta's gonna become a mama on the high seas. You mean it could happen that soon? It looks like, Sergeant. Oh, that's just great. It ain't enough we have to hide one cat on a ship. Now we have to hide a whole maternity ward. <laughs> Boy, you've pulled some dillies in your time, Gomer, but this time you've topped yourself, bringing an expectant cat aboard a Navy ship. Oh, brother. Sure, I'm sorry I've caused so much trouble. A lot of good that does. Gomer, quick, someone's coming, quick. Oh, never mind, it's only Sergeant Carter. You sure gave me a scare there, Sergeant. Wipe that smile off your face, pile. I ain't exactly in a jolly mood. Got to do something to get that cat off this bucket before it shoves off. If the Navy ever finds hey, out... I... how about sticking her in a basket and floating her to shore? We're too far out, she could float the wrong way. I sure hate the thought of putting Henrietta in the water. Then come up with something. We've got to do something. Sergeant, quick, got... the CPO is coming. Huh? Henrietta, whatever you do, you keep that little mouth of yours closed. Sergeant, I want to talk to you. Sure. No, no, what I want to say, I want to say right here in front of the men. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, well, okay, what seems to be the problem? Yesterday, I set down a set of rules and regulations which I expected to be followed to the T. Now, one of the things I mentioned was a subject of contraband. Unfortunately, it has come to my attention that one of your men has seen fit to ignore these regulations and has neglected to turn over to us contraband which he brought aboard this ship. Yeah, well, well uh... Look, I know all about it. I guess it's my fault for letting it happen in the first place, but before you do anything rash, let me explain. I'm not interested in any explanation, Sergeant. You know we can't allow a thing like that aboard ship. A thing like this could affect the whole communication system. <laughs> Transistor radio? <laughs> Transistor radio contraband. I found it on one of your men up on deck. You better check your men, Sergeant. If you find any more of these, they have to be confiscated till after the operation. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll get on it right away. Yeah, and you see that you do. That's contraband. And you know how I feel about contraband. Oh, sure, sure. We all know how you feel about contraband. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I thought Henrietta was a dead cat for sure that time. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you helping out, Sergeant. The cat lovers of America ought to hear about this. Yes, yeah, well, in the meantime, we still got a cat on our hands. Now, hear this. Now, hear this. All Marines topside for inspection at 1100. Full pack and weapons. Full pack and weapons. All right, that's 15 minutes from now. OK, you people, move it. Pile, secure that cat. Right, Sergeant. I made a leash out of a couple of boot straps here. That ought to keep her from roaming. All right, tie it down good. All right, Henrietta. I'm gonna have to anchor you down here for a while. There we go. Now we'll figure out something so you don't worry about things. Thank you. 
Sergeant? Yes, sir. Dirty weapon. Yes, sir. With you, Private. What's going on, Private? Uh, he hasn't been well, sir. Ever since he boarded ship, he's been having these attacks. I think it's just nerves, sir. Perhaps you better get him to sick bay. Aye, aye, sir. Right away, sir. I think if I could just go down to my bunk for a bit, I'd be all right. Very well. Dismissed. <laughs> Sure, it's the only way, Sergeant. Positive. We can't go on. Sergeant, you know what'll happen. Why, that's CPO... Look, what do you want me to do? Now, we tried to figure a way out, and we couldn't come up with it. I ain't sticking my neck Sergeant. out no more. She's really secured good this time. I doubled up on the bootstraps and put in an extra knot. I didn't see game's over with, Paul. Thank you, pardon? We're gonna turn the cat in. Sergeant Carter. It's the only way. If that CPO finds her roaming around down there, she's done for. This way, if we turn her in and tell him about the kittens, who knows? He may show a little mercy. Well, how can we be sure? We can't be, but if they ever found out I knew about that cat, I'll have my head handed to me. So I'm gonna make out like I just found her roaming around and I'm turning her in. There's still time to think of another way. Pyle, it's the cat's neck of mine. Now, who do you think's gonna win? Yes, Sergeant. All right, now get on there and bring her up here. Mama to be. That CPO's gonna take. Henrietta? Oh, she's gone and got unsecured again. Henrietta! Henrietta! Please be here. Henrietta! Sergeant, maybe if we went to the captain, right to the head man. No, 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 Sergeant no. Sergeant Carter, I got some bad news, some real bad news. The cat's gone. I don't know how it could have happened. I had her tied up real good this time. I really do you. You wanna know what I think? I think that their CPO must have found her. Now, we can't be sure of that. Uh, let's spread out and start looking for her. You go after, you go forward, and you go down the hole. Hey, Sergeant, look. He threw Henry and her overboard, just like that. He really did. What a mean thing. What a mean thing to do. Hey, what are you doing? What's going on here? Who, who jumped overboard? As if you didn't know all about it. What are you talking about? Boy, I've seen some cold cookies in my time, but you take the prize. Huh? Couldn't you have said something first? Maybe we could have figured something out. Boy, you're all hard, Chief. What are you talking Bye. about? Bye. I just... It wasn't what we thought at all. It was just a bunch of old magazines. Hey, he's right. Just old magazines. True love stories, real romances, passion digest. Hey, are these your magazines? Well, what if they are? Why'd you have to jump in after them? And after you're through with them, you want to get rid of the evidence, huh? Real romances, passion digest. <laughs> Look, what I choose to read is nobody's business, especially a bunch of rangers still wet behind the ears. Henrietta! Boy, am I glad to see you. I thought for sure you was done for. What's this? What's this? Do you know what that is? That's contraband. Contraband. Uh, look, buddy, let's not get all hot on the Look, you it's heard like what I said about pets aboard this ship, about contraband of any kind, and what I'd do if I found any. But you just can't do what you said she's going to do. There's something about this cat that you ought to know. Look, I know it's a cat. It's contraband. That's all I have to know. 
please, you can't throw overboard, please. This ain't no ordinary cat. This is a mama the bee cat. And from the looks of her, I think the time is just about here. I think all this excitement's bringing it on. What? That's right. A mama the bee cat. Any minute now. Please, please, you can't. Take you your can't. hands off me, private. Please don't do it, please. Look, pal, save your breath. Talking to him's like talking to a rock. I'll bet you spend your spare time pulling wings off flies. Go on, go on, you got your contraband. Throw the cat overboard, make yourself a big hero. Don't you tell me what to do, mister. If I want to throw this cat overboard, I'll throw him overboard when I want to throw him overboard. And no gyrene sergeant's going to tell me what to do. So happens I got something better to do with this cat right now. Yeah, like what? Like taking her down to the sick bay. I got a couple of raw pharmacist mates down there could use a little extra experience. And maybe helping deliver these kittens, it'd be good training for them. Wow, well, be. Just when you think you got a guy pegged, he double crosses you. How did you like that? Deep down, he's a good person just like you are, Sergeant. He wouldn't want to hurt no poor defenseless creature. Look, don't stand there dripping all over the deck. Get some dry clothes on. He may be a good person, Sergeant, but you're a warm, wonderful person. <laughs> Move it, pile. Right, Sergeant. And, Sergeant, if Henrietta has any male cats, I want to name the first one after you. I'm going to name her firstborn Vincent. On account of you're a warm, wonderful person. <laughs> Will you get out of here? <laughs> What is this? What are you, on a cruise? Break it out! Just a minute. Sergeant, come on over here. There's something y'all to see. Kyle, there's work to be done. What are you doing just standing around? Just looking there. Huh? There they are. Three are the young ones. Pharmacist mate here found a home for them. Yeah. Yeah. This one's here. This is the one I named after you. This is Vincent. Know why I call him that? Because he's so nice and warm and wonderful and good and trustworthy and promise. <laughs> Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. Ridiculous. It's like riding on a yo-yo. If we don't get to that island we're supposed to take pretty soon, we'll be finishing these war games in sick bay. Hey, where's Gomer? He's probably up on the deck leaning over the rail. That poor country boy has never been on a ship in his life. Hey, fellas. Boy, that ocean sure rough out there today. Oh, Gomer, we were just... What's that smell? Must be a starlit pickle. 
I was just down in the kitchen to get a snack, and they got all kinds of food left over. I wonder why. Gomer, either swallow that thing fast or get out of here. Are you feeling poorly, dude? That's a shame. Actually, if you got the miseries, garlic pickle would be good for you. You don't know why? Count of garlic's a herb, and herbs is generally very good for you. Do you know that? No, I'll, I'll remember it. Did you know that, that herbs is generally good for you? All right, you people, everybody topside. It's our turn to get the deck ship shape. Oh. Now, I want everybody... What's that smell? Why, what are you eating? Garlic pickle. It's real fresh and crisp. You don't buy it? No. <laughs> All right, out of them bunks. They're feeling poorly today, Sergeant. Well, I'm real sorry to hear about that. I would have arranged a smoother trip, but there was no more space left on the Queen Mary. Come on, move it, move it! I said move it. Move, 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 move! Out, 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 out! I sure hate to see him suffer, though. I'm glad you're all right, though. But I suppose you made so many of these trips that you're used to. Sure you don't want to buy it? No. On account of garlic, is a herb, and herbs is good for you. But I don't guess you got a use for a garlic pickle, heavy sergeant. No, get out of here! Come on, push them mops like you meant it. Get a little muscle behind it. Come on, move it. Move, 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 move. Rub it up, submarines in a tub. Rub it up, submarines in a tub. Rub it up, the... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just trying to cheer you up. Hey, what's this? What's this? Well, your men don't seem to have their hearts in their work today, Sergeant. What's the matter? The nasty waves too much for them? There ain't nothing the matter with my men. They're all in perfect shape. Yeah, I can see that. They're all a nice, healthy shade of green. Kind of an aqua. Aquamarines. Hey, aquamarines. I just made that up. Funny. I didn't stop by the chat. You wanted down the briefing room. Okay. All right, you people. I don't want nobody going below until this deck is spotless. You hear me? Carry on. Aquamarines. This is where we hit the beach in this exercise. We'll be making the landing operations at 0700 tomorrow morning. However, before we move in, I want the island reconnoitered for troop displacement, strength, etc. Sergeant Carter, I'd like you to lead the reconnaissance patrol. Aye, aye, sir. Take three men with you. We'll put you ashore just after dawn. We expect early morning fog, so you should have good concealment. Yes, sir. Now, it's vital that you get the information back to us as quickly as possible so we can make adjustments in our deployment. We have to make those landings no later than 0700. That's right. A delay could be disastrous. There's been an enemy sub stalking our task force for days, and they've already recorded six kills. If we lose many more ships, we may not have enough of a force left to make the landing. So you see the importance of speed, Sergeant. Yes, sir. It'll be done, sir. Simpson, you'll arrange for a boat for Sergeant Carter and his men. Yes, sir. Well, that's it. Good luck. <laughs> Just get the boat, Navy. The Marines will take care of the rest. You mean aquamarines. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how important this patrol is. It'll be like spearheading the whole invasion. Now, I could pick three men myself, but I'd rather have volunteers. I'll volunteer, Sergeant. Okay, man, who wants to go? Let's hear it. I'll be glad to go. Come on, come on. I need three men. Okay, that's one. Now, I need two more. I'll go, Sergeant. All right, all right. Who else? Who else, huh? Sarge, I'll go. Okay, Lombardi, you're in. Okay, now, I need one more. Just one more. I'll go. Uh, come on, come on. One more. One... I'll go. Okay, that makes it three. Now, I want to get together with the three of you for a briefing session just, before... It just ain't fair, Sergeant. It just ain't fair. Hi, Al, are you talking to me? Well, I don't mean to be disrespectful, sir. But I was the first person that raised my hand. I volunteered first. It just ain't fair that you won't take me. Really? Well, for your information, this is a very important mission, and I gotta have men I can depend on. You can depend on me, Sergeant Honest. Please let me go, please. Knock it off, pile. I've got my three men. Hit, hut! As you were. Sergeant. Yes, sir? I need nine of your men for the ammo detail tomorrow morning. I'll be loading ammo and explosives on the landing craft. 
Aye, sir, you'll have him. Then report to me at 0600, sharp. Aye, sir. Okay. You men not going on a patrol, report to Lieutenant Wilson in the morning. Remember, that's a very delicate job, handling ammo and high explosives. One wrong move and you can blow up the whole ship. So work careful, watch your step, and Pyle, I think you better come with me after all. <laughs> I changed my mind, Pyle. You're going with me. You go on the ammo detail. Oh, thank you, Sergeant Carter. Thank you. Pyle, you just better be on the ball, that's all. Don't worry, Sergeant. I'll be a credit to the corpse. Now, we got to pull this off, and we got to pull it off without a hitch, and we got to make it fast. We don't want our ships waiting out there like sitting ducks. You all heard about that enemy sub that's been scoring one kill after another? Well, we got to make that landing before he can do any more damage. So you men going on the patrol, get your gear and ammo together, get your weapons clean. I'll see you again before we go in. Sergeant Carter? Yeah? I just wanted to tell you, you won't regret taking me along. Thanks to your fine training, I'm ready for action now. All the learning is over. From now on, it's gung-ho! <laughs> Well, like they say in all the war pictures, I wish I was going with you, Sergeant. Why don't you go wash out a few things? Okay, let's go, men. Oh, get them, Leatherneck. Find it and sit. Yes, sir. All right, get the oars out. What are you doing now, Pyle? I was going to put my bayonet on the rifle. I want to be ready when we hit the beach. There's plenty of time for that later. Put it back. Yes, sir. Sergeant, but it wasn't my fault. You see, the boat started to rock. Don't and... talk, Pyle. Just don't talk. Now, what are you standing around for? Get below and get changed. But, Sergeant... Come on, move it, move it. I said get below and get changed. That's okay, Sergeant. We have a lot more boats. That's what we're here for. <laughs> get another boat. Come right up. <laughs> Sergeant? I did want to tell you how sorry I am, and I am sorry, but it was the funniest thing, the way that bayonet just stuck into that rail. Yeah, wasn't it, though? Look how I'm still laughing. I can't blame you one bit for being angry. No, sir. Will you knock it off, Pyle, and start changing? I don't want to hear no more about that bayonet or that raft. Now get changed. Right, Sergeant. Boy, Sergeant, you know that water sure is salty, ain't it? Change! Change! <laughs> Sergeant, if at first you don't succeed, come on, let's go. Over here by my flare gun, and it'd be 
I knew it might be a bit of a problem making it to the beach, but I didn't think there'd be so much trouble getting started. I'm sorry, sir. We're losing precious time. How fast can we get another boat? Just a few minutes, sir. I trust this will be the last boat necessary. Don't worry, sir. We'll make it this time. Let's hope so. Aye, sir. <laughs> Let's get below! All right, get another boat from the starboard side on the double. Yeah, once again. Let's go. Well, I'm sure glad I didn't take a shower this morning, aren't you? I sure am. I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I had no idea that that safety was off, and I just... I'll get you for this, pile. If it takes the rest of my days, I'll get you for this. But I didn't do them things on purpose. I was just trying to... Don't help. talk, pile. I don't want to hear your voice. Yes, Sergeant. I said I didn't want to hear your voice. Just, just change, change. Yes, Sergeant. I said don't talk, change. <laughs> Sergeant, Grandma Pye used to always say, to err is human, to forgive divine. So if you just forgive me this time... Oh, I'll, I'll forgive you, all right. Do you want to know how? You see this shirt? Well, that's you. <laughs> I said, let's go. Move, 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 move. Come on, move it. All right, start rolling. But, Sergeant, are we going to wait for Goma? I can't hear a word you say. <laughs> fast as we can, Sergeant. We've already blown a half an hour. We're holding up the whole operation. Sergeant Carter. Don't talk, Pyle. Don't talk. Just do you know what I had to do just now? I had to beg. Beg the battalion commander not to replace me on this mission. Why, well, sure am. Sorry, Sergeant. Don't talk, Pyle. Just don't talk. I had to beg him for another chance, and all because of one Marine. One Marine. And all he needed was a half an hour. A half an hour to mess up 15 years in the Marines. Anything I do from now on will be a comeback. Ready, Sergeant. All right, let's go. Come on, move it, move it. 15 years. 15 years. Okay, lower away. Now that you've managed to delay long enough, the fog is beginning to roll in, so we have to make a slight change in plans. We sent up a plane to check and make sure that enemy sub isn't in the area. If it is, you'd be an easy target, and so would we. So just move out about 100 yards and wait for a signal from us before you proceed to the beach. Aye, sir. And don't worry, sir. We'll make it this time. I'll be grateful if you just make it away from the ship. <laughs> Carry on. Aye, sir. All right, move it. Just possible. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, hold everything. What's this? What's huh? What do you mean? Look how sad that poor fella's about being left behind. Kind of gets you right here, you know? So maybe we could do a good deed and send it back to his owner. What do you mean, Chief? Pencil. Hey, uh, Marine, come here.
Pyle, that's your name, isn't it? Yes, sir, Gomer Pyle. Well, Pyle, I have a very important mission for you. You do? That's right. Now, you see a sergeant out there with his patrol? You notice the way they've stopped? Yes, sir, something wrong? No, 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 it's all part of the big plan. Now, they can't proceed to the beach until they get a message from the high command. You don't say. And that message was just handed to me. Now, I want you to swim out there and give it to the sergeant personally. You want me to swim? That's right. But we don't want to use a boat and take a chance of attracting attention. I mean, this is top secret. You understand that, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, put it in a cellophane to keep it dry. Now, there. Now, you better get cracking. We haven't got a second to lose. Yes, sir. And thank you, sir, for giving me this chance. It might help me get back in good with Sergeant Carter. Wouldn't be at all surprised. And don't worry, Sergeant Carter will get the message. I'm sure he will. <laughs> Boy, they're sure taking their sweet time with that signal. Take it easy. Blaine's probably still up there searching. <laughs> Sarge, look. Look, there's something there in the water. Look, look. It's a guy swimming. Yeah. He seems to be coming this way. What would anybody be swimming out here for? I, I don't know. Maybe it's one of those Navy frogmen. Yeah, it could be, but why would he... No. <laughs> just one of them sea mirages. That's what happens when you're out in the ocean. You begin to see things that ain't really there. Hey, Sergeant Parker. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Now, oh. why not love, Gomer? What are you doing out here? All right, let's have it, pile, and make it good. I got a really important message for you, Sergeant, from the high command. A message? What kind of message? It's top secret. That's the reason the CPO sent me out here to give it to you personally. The CPO sent you? That's right. Here. <laughs> That's a real good idea, Sergeant, destroying that secret method so the enemy can't see it. I'll destroy that CPO. When I see him, I'll kill him with my bands. I'll kill him. What's the matter, Sergeant? He was only doing his duty. See, so he got this message from High Command. Okay, and... Pyle. You brought me a message. Now I got a message for you to take back. You have? Yeah. Did you enjoy your little swim out here? Sure did. You think you can make it back all right? Easy. Well, just swim back to the ship. Right, Sergeant. What's the message? Tell that CPO to drop dead. <laughs> Pyle, there's an enemy sub somewhere in this vicinity, probably staring at us at this very minute. Now, you're a jinx, so get out of this boat. Out, out. But, Sergeant, I'll... Sergeant, look! That's the signal. We gotta get started. Out, Pyle, out, out, out! Sergeant, I'm not a jinx. Honest, I'm not. And I'll make good if you just give me the chain. Out, 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 out. Seems a lot colder than it did the first time. Start swimming. You'll warm up. <laughs> Any sign of Gomer, Sergeant? Huh? Can you spot Gomer anywhere? That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a submarine. Sir, it's suddenly blacked out. It's impossible. <laughs> Pile! Sergeant Carter, this thing was sticking right up out of the water. What'd I do? What'd I do? It's 
It's a periscope. He's landed on a periscope. Hang on, pile. Hang on. It's a submarine. It's right under you. Golly. Went and captured up the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> we went and captured us a submarine. <laughs> exercises. The Marine Corps has done much in its long and illustrious history, but never before has a sub been captured by a handful of Marines in a rubber boat. If that sub had been operating during the landings, it could have been a disaster. As it turned out, the operation was a huge success. Again, congratulations to all of you. Carry on. Hey, Sergeant Carter, I bet you'd get a promotion out of this. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I'll bet you do. Why, they might even make you one of the... Hey, there goes that nice CPO. Hey, there! I've been looking all over for you. Where you been, anyhow? I wanted to thank you for picking me to take that message to Sergeant Carter. If you hadn't, I'd have missed all the excitement. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. One week on board ship and you slowed down to a crawl. Probably the trouble is you miss them nice long hikes we used to take. You know, them nice long walks in the country. Look at that. What are you, gaining weight? Well, this Navy food sure is good, Sergeant. They must use different spices, like that lamb we had last night. Mm. Pyle, when are you going to learn not to talk in ranks? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I thought you asked me a question. I did not ask a question. And if I do ask a question, I do not want you to answer it. You understand? Well, is that a question? It is. The answer is yes. If it's Knock it off! <laughs> now, hear this and hear it good. We are Marines on a Navy ship. From now on, we're going to shape up and look and act like Marines. And to start getting you guys back in condition, we're going to have a daily program of good, strong exercise. That's right. To get rid of the fat and the sluggishness. So... When you're dismissed here, you will suit up in sweatsuits and report to me in the gym in five minutes. Now, Pyle, what do you think you're doing? I got something in my eye, Sergeant. So you got something in your eye. All right. Well, it hurts, Sergeant. Well, pull the upper lid over the lower lid and just wipe it out. 
Now, I'm going to start an athletic program that will get each one of you men squared away. I want it. That don't work, Sergeant. What? <laughs> Pulling the upper lid over the lower lid. All right. Take hut. Hair smash. All right, pile. Let me look at it. All right, come around to the light. You know I can see my reflection right in your eye. Swell. Here. Blow your nose. What? Blow your nose. <laughs> well, what's this? What's this? You see that, boys? They blow their noses for them. Isn't that nice? Say, Sarge, do you tie their shoes for them, too? Why, he never. We tie our own shoes. Oh, <laughs> you tie your own shoes. They have to tie their own shoes. But he does do a lot of other nice things for us. Yeah, like what? Well, like once when we was on a hike, I turned my ankle, and he carried me all the way home in his arms. Remember, Sergeant? <laughs> Is that right? He sure did, just like I was a baby, didn't you, Sergeant? Gee, the next thing you know, he'll be saying he tucked you in bed, too. Well, as a matter of fact, one time when I had the flu... Dismiss, thought... Pyle. Well, it was a kind of human thing to do, Sergeant. Dismiss, thought... Pyle, dismiss! Dismiss! <laughs> yes, sir. Gee, tucked him in bed. Isn't that precious? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, next. Pile of body. Come on, mix it up. <laughs> well, come on, mix it up, mix it up. Looks like a waltz contest. <laughs> Give me them gloves. Sure, Sergeant. You can have mine too, Sergeant. No, you keep yours on. I want to show you something. You guys are dancing around like you never saw a fight or a pair of gloves in your whole life. All right, come on, get over there. All right. Now, first, I want to show you how to throw a jab. You stand like this, see? You turn behind your shoulder and you shoot that left out like that. Like this, see? Jab! Jab! <laughs> Boy, it sure is slick, Sergeant. Well, hey there, Chief. All right, now, you got that? Your shoulder high. Jack! Jack! Boy, that's slick. <laughs> well, am I doing it right? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Sergeant, not quite. You think you can do it better? Yeah, I think so. Hey, give me a left glove, will you, Private? Now, you see, Sergeant, here, your foot position is okay, but when you when you throw your jab, you got your left elbow up too high. See, that's okay for a hook. But for a jab, no. Jab, you cock your arm back like this and shoot out like a piston. See? <laughs> Shazam! That sure is neat, Chief. Well, it's no different than the way I throw a look. <laughs> Golly, Sergeant, that's real neat, too. Come on, Sergeant, let him settle it. Which one of those two punches was the best, Private? Golly, Chief, it's kind of hard to say. They was both just as nice as could be. Wow, well, mine was the hardest, wasn't it? Well, maybe it was. Come on, Sergeant, you couldn't break an egg with that jab of yours. Maybe I couldn't break an egg, but I sure could make an impression on your chin. You really think so? You bet I do. I mean, really? Yeah. Well, there's one way to find out. I thought you'd never ask. Pile, give him that No, no, wait, I got a better idea. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Okay, if you're scared, forget yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm not backing out, but here's the way it is, see? The boys are having a smoker up on deck Friday night, and we're having some bouts, see? Now, if you want to fight me, why don't we settle it there? I mean, why waste it here in the gym? Let everybody in on it. What do you say, Sarge? Up on deck? In front of the whole ship? Sure, go ahead, Sergeant. Take him up on it. Yeah, yeah. Sarge, you can go on it. Yeah, okay, sure, why not? I'll fight you here or at the smoker. What difference does it make? I don't want to fight you. Okay, Sarge, we got a deal. It's you and me in the main event at the smoker Friday night. That ought to get the boys a kick. Okay, buddy, I'll see you then. And don't forget to show up now. 
Hey, Sergeant, do you think you can whoop him? Oh, sure he can. Sure he can, yeah. yeah. You'll be fighting in front of the whole ship. So I'll be fighting in front of the whole ship. I'm no rank amateur, you know. You mean you've had some fights, Sergeant? What do you think? Listen, I'll tell you something. I was the welterweight champion junior high. Is that right, Sergeant? You was a champion? Sure, there were 65 guys in the class, too. Killer Carter, they called me. My gym teacher thought I should turn pro. He said my right was better than Lewis's. Joe Lewis? No, Lewis Patman. He was a champ in the class ahead of me. <laughs> well, listen, I'd keep this quiet if I were you fellas, because if Simpson finds out, he's liable to try to back out. It's too bad this ain't a pro fight, fellas. Why is that, Sergeant? Well, I mean, you might be able to pick up a few bucks. You know, betting on me. Hey, what's to stop us? Well, it wouldn't be too ethical for your sergeant to suggest something like that. Especially with me being the favorite. <laughs> oh, boy, I can't wait till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Holy killer Carter. Thirteen dollars. How much you got? Good. Twenty-two. Now, if we can just find some suckers to bet with. I don't know about this bet, and I never did believe much in that. Gomer, it was the sergeant who gave us the idea. Yeah, Gomer, he was almost telling us to do it. But only if it was a professional fight, he said. Gomer, please, don't spoil it. Shouldn't we tell him that Sergeant Carter was the champion of his school? No, no, no. Whatever you do, don't tell him that. But he was. I know, but if they find out Carter's an experienced boxer, they'll want odds. But we ought to tell them the truth. The chief ought to know who he's fighting. He might get himself hurt. Gomer, you know what they say, all's fair in love and war. And this is war, sort of. Hey, Duke, look over there. Hey, good place to find some suckers. Let's get over there. Yeah, good idea. I don't know. I don't think it's right to bet. Come on, come on, run. hard like a hammer. Yeah. He, uh, he handles that bag pretty good, don't he? Yeah. You have some fights for he's in the Navy? You're putting me on Mac. Huh. Don't you know about the chief? Fleet champ for four years. 37 knockouts. <laughs> he only quit because nobody would fight him. <laughs> Fleet champ for four years. The only reason he quit is because he couldn't find anybody to fight with. That's better than being junior high school champ, ain't it? I'd say so. Lots better. Come on, we better get out of here. Let's find Sergeant Carter and tell him what he's walking into. Come on. Yeah, well, we better. back in shape. Uh, Sergeant, we were... Uh, no, no, don't tell me if you're putting any bets down on me. I mean, I don't want to hear anything about gambling. Anything you do like that, well, it's uh, strictly up to you. Sergeant, what we're trying to tell you is uh, we were watching the chief train up on deck. Yeah? What's this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do that every time. Boom, boom. <laughs> Sergeant, what Dick was trying to tell you is we was up on the deck watching the chief train for quite a while. Yeah, he's got him, huh? That's smart. Where's he weak, huh? His hook's right where? No place. Huh? That's right. It's not a weak spot on him. It's all hair and muscle. What are you guys trying to tell me? Well, the fact is, Sarge, we found out the chief was fleet champ for four years. He only quit because nobody would fight him. Yeah? Yeah, and he's got 37 knockouts. Okay, so he was a fleet champ. So what? Well, well, you might be outclassed, Sergeant. It, it might be too one-sided. What? Sergeant, I think it'd be to your credit if you spoke up and said, 
This fight is unfair. My opponent is a stronger and better fighter than I am. And I think it's silly to fight him. That be to your credit. Are you kidding? But, Sarge, it's not a match. I, I think nobody would blame me if you came down with a bad cold or something. Look, if I didn't know better, I'd think that chief sent you guys over here to scare me. Out, out, I don't want to hear anymore. Get out. Out, 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 out. Out, 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 get out of here. Out, 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 out. You know what I'm thinking, you guys? Uh-huh. Sergeant Carter's gonna get himself killed. <laughs> Just what Sergeant Carter's gonna get his safe is killed. Yeah, Goma, I'm worried about him, too. He could get himself hurt bad. But well, why he's so stubborn? Everybody'd understand if he'd just speak up and say, I do not wish to fight someone so much better than I am. So for that reason, Goma, I am... Goma, forget it. Look, you know he's not gonna do that. Yeah. You know, you guys, I'm wondering, maybe if we can't get through to the Sergeant, we can get through to the Chief. How do you mean? I mean psychological warfare. Huh? The old war on nerves. We'll gaslight him. How do you do that? We scare him to death, and maybe he'll back out. We'll have to get some of the rest of the guys in on it, but it might just work. <laughs> yeah, psychological warfare. It's our only hope. <laughs> Who's here? The boys in green. I bet your sergeant's pretty green about now, right, fellas? <laughs> you know, maybe after this fight, we'll get to see our first burial at sea. <laughs> you fellas sure crack a good joke. What do you guys want? Well, the guys in our platoon got together and pulled all their money and sent us over here to find out if you guys might be interested in making a little bet on the fight. A bet? You mean you guys want to bet on Carter? Well, sure. You don't think we bet on anybody else, do you? I'd like some of that action. Yeah, me too. How much you guys got? 220 bucks. I don't know if we can cover all that. Suppose you guys want the odds? Five to one? Five to one? Oh, no, no. That's too high. We, we couldn't possibly give him five to one, could we, Frankie? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm sorry, fellas. Best we could give you is four to one. Take it or leave it. Wait a minute. You want to give us four to one odds? Make Carter the favorite? Yeah. After all, our sergeant's an ex-champ. He's an ex-champ? That's right. He beat 65 guys back when he was... Back in the days when he was fighting welterweight. 65 wins. What? What do you say? Well, wait a minute. What about those 65 wins? Nothing. You want to bet or don't you? What 65 guys did he beat? Do you want to bet? At four to one? Okay, we'll take the whole thing. Come on, guys. Get your money together. Right here. Let's go. Come on. Hey, uh, hey, Gomer, look. They're putting up the money. You said they'd be too scared to bet. I did? Sure. You said they probably heard about Killer Carter. Remember? What's this about Killer Carter? Nothing, nothing. Get your dough together. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What were you saying about Killer Carter? That's what they used to call him. His coach thought he should turn pro, said his right was better than Lewis's. Gomer, that's enough. That's enough. You got your money together? We ain't got all day. Yeah, we got it right here. $55. Now, what's this about Killer Carter? Nothing, nothing. Well, here's our dough. Hey. We'll let you hold it. We trust you, see? But uh, you keep it handy because we're going to be coming for it right after the fight, okay? Come on, you guys. Let's go, Gomer. Can I help you guys? Oh, he just came out of sea car to train. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. I can't do it. I got my orders. Sorry, just sparring. He doesn't want to see any visitors. So what? It won't hurt to take a look. Uh uh. Sorry. Ah! Oh! Oh! Take it easy, Sarge. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. It's deceitful. Just one more, Comer. Ready? No! Oh! Oh! I ain't sparring with him no more. I've had it. Ah, don't worry, George. In a day or two, you'll be as good as new. Listen to that bag. Sarge sure has fast hands. I'll say that for him. <laughs> yeah, fast hands. Well, how long can he keep that up? He's been at it for 20 minutes. All day, buddy. All day. You like that one, too? 
One, two. That's four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine. <laughs> What's this? I'm a six to one underdog. Well, you see this guy train, Chief. He he's been murdering his barn partners. You ought to hear him on that heavy back. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you guys forgetting I was the fleet champ? Well, that was a couple of years ago, Chief. You might have slowed up a little since then. What slowed up? That's a joke. I'd like to put down ten bucks at six to one if I could get anybody to take the bet. I'll take it, Chief. <laughs> Come on. I gotta see this guy for myself. Come on. <laughs> Okay, on your toes. Here comes the chief. Get going. Deceitful, deceitful, deceitful. Go and just try and remember it's to save your dear sergeant's life. Will you please keep remembering that? Well. Here. Here, put this in your mouth. Man. Okay, get in. What do you mean I can't go inside? You can't keep me out of there. Please, chief. <laughs> it's for your own good. Sergeant's worked himself up to such a pitch. If he sees you, he'll go for you right now. He won't even wait till tomorrow night. Look, that's okay with me if he wants it now. I'll give it to him now. No, Chief, you can't. You might get hurt. Well, <laughs> oh, don't worry, Leonard. You'll be eating solid food again in no time, pal. Chief, if you still want that bet, I'll make it ten to one. <laughs> hey, Chief. You should have seen his face. Did it work? Like a charm. It worked. <laughs> deceitful. Just plain deceitful. I know. I know. It's to save Sergeant Carter's life. Oh, he was gaslit, all right. If anybody was gaslit, it was him. You see, Gomer? Psychological warfare. It's the only thing that can save the Sarge. Yep, the old war nerves. It works every time. Hey, Sergeant Carter. <laughs> What's going on here, huh? Hey, fellas, I think it worked. I think it worked. Did you see the chiefs? Well, come on, what's going on here? What is all this? Well, talk, somebody, talk. You were talking pretty good when I came in and it. Keep going. Oh, well, yeah, I'm waiting. You see, we was using psychological warfare. What? That's what you do when another fella is stronger than you are and it's liable to beat your brains out. Huh? <laughs> so we gave him the guy slide. Who? What are you talking about, anyway? Well, Chief Simpson, you see, we was real worried about you, and you wouldn't back out, so we couldn't let you go in there and get hurt. So? So we threw a little scare into him, that's all. Yeah? How'd you do that? Well, first of all, all the guys got together and put up all their money, and we went over and bet it on you. Yeah, and we, and we gave those sailors four to one odds. You gave them four to one odds? On me? Well, it, it shook them up pretty good. And then we pretended... This was your training camp, and you were knocking everybody out. You guys bet all the dough you had and gave four to one? Well, you can lose the whole wad. Oh, we didn't care about that as long as it was going to help you. I personally thought it was a deceitful thing to do, but, well, as long as it was going to help out. You guys did all that for me? Mm. You know something, fellas? I'll level with you. I was kind of worried about fighting that guy. But not anymore. That gaslighting worked on me, too. What you guys did is given me strength, confidence. You know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to fight that guy like nobody ever fought before. And I'm going to knock him out. And you know why? Why, Sergeant? Because you guys care. <laughs> Sergeant's really a picture of hell, ain't he? He's even got roses in his cheek. I'll tell you one thing, Gomer. Many a fight's been won on sheer confidence. Yeah, the Sarge has plenty of that. He sure has. Bless his heart. <laughs> How do you feel, Sarge? of the evening in this corner weighing 162 and a half wearing gold trunks 
the pride of the Marine Sergeant Vince Killacotta. <laughs> and in this corner, weighing 171, wearing white trunks, the former fleet champion, Wayne Rattlesnake Simpson. <laughs> What do you find, Duke? Well, like I said, Goomer, that confidence the sergeant was talking about, it could make the difference. And he's got it. Bless his heart. Touch gloves and come out fighting. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. What happened? Well, he knocked you out his foot. You okay now, Sarge? Huh? I'm sorry, Simon B. What happened, Sarge? You were so full of confidence. Well, I'll tell you something, fellas. That confidence is okay, but a good right cross is better. <laughs> called you here to tell you this. I want to thank you for all you did. And I also want to apologize for last night's fight. Now, I know you lost a lot of money betting on me, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see that every one of you get paid back. Uh, uh, Sergeant? It may take me a little while, but you're going to get every cent of it back. Because what you guys did... Uh, Sergeant? What is it, Slater? Well, uh, Sergeant, you don't have to pay us back. We already got our money back. In fact, more. You did? How? Oh. Well, when the odds went to 20 to 1, we got $12 together and went over and bet it on the chief. Huh? You did? Why did you do that? Well, Sergeant, it's not that we weren't loyal or anything. It's just that we all thought those odds were too good to pass up. <laughs> OK. So you wanted to pick up a few extra bucks. That's what was important, huh? So you bet against your sergeant. You all won. Swell. All except you, Pyle. You didn't bet, did you? No, sir. I don't believe in betting. Good. But if I did believe in betting, I'd have bet some money on the chief and I'd give all my winnings to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, 